Hello, everyone. Sorry it's been a month, but we're back with another episode of Star Trek Cerberus, where we investigate an explosive situation on the station and a tense situation at a remote planet. So I believe that we are going to have a station log from Commander Dalrum. Yes. I had it pulled up. Where is it? There it is. First Officer's Log, Stardate 28448.1. The Klingons are recovering quietly in sickbay, which is some welcome to good news. Uh, we have made, uh, we have not made much headway in our investigation into the explosion. The Romulans are uh, still on the list of suspects, however, other than the energy signature of the vi of the device, nothing clearly places them as the cause of the explosion. Scans of the embassy and the quarters of the Romulans have continued to come up with negative results. If the explosion wasn't bad enough, we currently have a loaded powder keg in our docking bays. With this incident, both the Romulans and the Klingons are uh, standing at battle-ready modes. Um, I have evacuated the uh, citizens and workers near the area um, by voluntary, but in case they get jumpy, never can be too careful. With everything unfolding, I have placed Deep Space 15 on a loose quarantine. The Ferengi have protested this order due to their wanting to explore the gates uh, in the interest of explore, uh, exploring for profit. I am expecting them to, uh, to try my hand and leave soon. You'd think with better ears they would listen better. We, are, we have been attempting to send a message to Captain Crawford and the away team, as well as Starbase uh, 185 and Deep Space 5, our two closest neighbors, for assistance, but have not had success. We are uh, assuming that the nebula is playing havoc on our communications rays. Our next move will probably be to send another ship after the captain to get the message to him. This is going to be a long day. And log... Oh, yes, it is indeed going to be a long day for poor Commander Dolrum, um, just because this sort of was his idea, although also mine. Uh, we're going to start on Ops, where it is awfully quiet with most of the senior staff out. And uh, Commander Dolrum, uh, Lieutenant Derval quickly uh, speaks up. Sir, we're, uh, Commander, we are receiving a hail from the Limitless Latinum. Damon Gong wishes to speak with you. Put them on screen. All right. And she appears on the uh, projection screen because she is too cheap to afford or to pay for the full holographic sy uh, systems. Captain, I dem or Commander, I demand that you let my ship out of this uh, starbase. This is, you're holding us against our wishes. This is completely unethical and unprofitable for both of us. Last I checked, Damon, the station was on quarantine, which means no one in and no one out. A quarantine should only work for... should only... Ah, a quarantine should only take pl effect if there is a biological contaminant being spread throughout the station. The only biological contaminant is a few Klingons and Romulans with itchy trigger fingers. And yet nothing connects either one to the explosion, other than the two races hate each other. We haven't ruled anybody out as a suspect, including you and your team. And she sort of uh, signals a quick mute on the audio as she says something to someone off camera. Commander, let's... I am a generous woman, and I believe that we could reach a neutral arrangement here perhaps i could sell you the uh, sensor records from my ship that were taken during this time perhaps you might find something of interest in exchange... why is this new information just now coming up when we've asked before well quite frankly we you were not mm, willing to pay for it yet now i believe the time is right I'm pretty sure I have all of the Latinum on this spec, considering we are the ones that let you leave. Until this investigation is over, no one is leaving the station. You, uh, 
Cap Commander, I will be lodging a formal protest with your captain and whichever admiral you report to. Go right ahead. But until they return, my orders stand. Return to your dock. Hmm. She sort of pouts a bit and, without saying anything else, cuts the channel. And Darval quickly reports that they are powering down their engines. Thank you, Darval. Make sure that you keep a close eye on them. They're going to try something again. Ferengi always do. Aye, Captain. Um, and just because Star Trek has a way of doing timing, uh, Commander Dalrum, your uh, chime go or your chime goes off, or your uh, your communicator goes Bye. off. Uh, sick bay to bridge. This is Commander Dolrum. Uh Commander, this is uh, Nurse uh, Aisha. I believe her name was Aisha. Uh, yeah. Could you please report to sick bay. Um, your husband has been attacked. I will be there as soon as I possibly can. I do a side-to-side -side transport. All right. With that, uh, as you leave, um, you materialize. Ah, it would help if I could get my layers right. You copy token. As you materialize out, um, Lieutenant Darval just sort of says to Ensign Lakila, the only other person on the ops, says, I suppose it is logical that I have the con now. And we transfer to sickbay. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is called the infirmary because this is a station. Okay. Welcome to sickbay. Commander Dolrum materializes in the... Um, waiting room in the waiting room and 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 is soon greeted by Ashia who is the head nurse of the of the facility and also uh, overseeing the training of the many of the uh, on call individuals uh, she rushes out uh, captain commander commander um i will let oh we have two talks on board there we go uh, he was uh, he was found just this just a half hour ago in the arboretum. Somebody attacked him, sir, knocked him unconscious. Well, that's very concerning. Hmm. Any idea of who might have done it? Not aware. Not sure yet, sir. We've been doing some. Uh, we've been doing a DNA test, but no. Uh, we're waiting out. We are awaiting conclusive evidence before we can pin anything down. Understandable. Anything that security can do? We're, mm, I don't know if we have a security officer here yet. Um, you're the first to arrive, sir. Uh, security's been notified. They're doing a sweep of the crime scene. Understood. Thank you. How was he attacked? <clears throat> ah, um... This is where we'll start doing rolls. Uh, so I believe that this uh, that uh, Takeshi wanted to create this character, so we'll let Takeshi do the rolls. Uh, okay. So this will be an, call in for sheet. Yeah, an insight medical with a difficulty of one, and something along the lines of biology or um, biology, hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, anything like that would be of use. Okay, so far I, I used a template for her. She has anesthesia, pharmacology, patient care. Um, not really any of those. So perhaps Katok might be a better character for this. I don't know. Either or. Um, let me look at. Or even Valen Dalrum, who you know happens to also be a nurse, and uh, he wouldn't be of any help here either. <laughs> ah. Well, this, um, unless you would consider diagnosis one. But... Diagnosis might be it, um, but this is also an activation for him, so you could give him another focus if you want, or boost one of his attributes, mm -hmm. or give him a talent. So, either or. Uh... Van, Van has xenobiology, emergency medicine, and medical diagnost diagnostic. Um, both of those, either of those would be useful. So, Valen could... Van it is. Van, <laughs> Van, not yeah, Valen. sure. 
Who wants do who anybody want to run Vayan? Uh where are they at? Uh they're under the civilians. Um Oh, okay. Uh sure, I'll roll for Vayan, why not? Okay. And this is an activation for her too, so be for however you would like. Okay. And you said it was insight medicine? Yes. Okay. Oh, and that's uh, three successes. Uh, so two momentum, whoever wants to keep track. I can do that. All right. Okay. Uh, so Apatu is still unconscious, <laughs> but he's just under um, medically induced coma at the moment while he's undergoing th- uh, treatment. Um, th- he's received several blunt trauma strikes to the uh, uh, his abdominal area and a couple to his uh, head area. Um, Vayan uh, would believe that he has been beaten uh, most likely with an either a blunt object or a fist of some sort or an appendage I guess is the best term for it hmm. well that's not good at all first the attack first the explosion now the attack on my husband I feel like somebody's trying to out to get me Uh, hey, honey. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Miss... Hey, Van. Have you told your brothers? Uh, yes, but they are, uh, they're on their way now. Good. It's probably good that we all be here. And let's say on cue, um, both Bodag and Xyler show up. And they would be in the right Fine. Move to token layer. There we go. They come through the door. Dad. Yes. Vane called us. What's going on? Oh. Yeah, your father was apparently attacked in the arboretum. Zyre, who I believe was the security-focused one. Yep, Zyler's very security. Zyler is... Uh, um, Zyler moves to push through all the medical officers between him and Apatu. And I would like someone to roll for Zyler uh, to see if he might be able to understand something. Uh, this would be an insight plus security with a difficulty of two. For Xyler? Uh, for Xyler, yes. If he happens to have hand-to-hand combat or martial arts or anything like that, that would be... He useful. has both of those, actually. Oh, does he? Well, perfect. <laughs> what, did you, what did you say? Uh, uh, insight, insight security. Insight, difficulty two. Security. 20 and multiple focuses. That'll do it. That's two successes. He looks... Dad, Ember was... or uh, Whoever wants to roleplay Xyler, um, Xyler recognizes where this may have come from. Or at least the... Uh, where the... Uh, the pattern of blows, perhaps. Um, it appears to be a... V- if he is accurate in his assumption, and if Ember taught him... the uh, unarmed combat well enough. This appears to be some sort of Vulcan martial art known as um, I have it written down the Sus Mana, the Sus Mana. A um, it's a series of or it it preaches unarmed combat, but with quick strikes and dodges meant to uh, it, uh, meant to take advantage of Vulcans. Uh, physical superior nature uh, over the unvulcans uh, problem is um, Zyler you don't believe that it's actually a Vulcan that did this because if they were Apatu's ribs would have been cracked or disintegrated and his head probably might have been split in two so it's something practicing a Vulcan martial art but not a, probably not an artist. 
Or probably not a Vulcan. All right. Xyler relays all that information, because unless anybody wants to play Xyler. Doesn't sound like he has much keen at the moment. That's fine. Um, I'll uh, ask Xyler. Since you tend to be more uh, more involved with security around here than I do, do you know anybody... He sort of shakes his head. There's probably several of the security officers that know something. Um, but pro there's pro I know there's a couple Vulcans on the force, but I, Dad, I don't think they could do... I. It would not be logical for them to attack him. I agree, but with the Klingons first attacked with an explosion, now this... There's somebody on the station that wants to cause trouble. Uh, speaking of causing trouble, um, in walks Michael Jensen. The hologram here? Not at the moment. As you see Jensen walks in, you see a couple of light cuts, a split lip cut across the nose, and he's not hiding the fact that his knuckles are bloody. Great. Uh, Nurse Aish, Nurse Aisha, uh, who happens to be a Delton, I believe, is quick yeah. to intercede. Hello, Nurse. Uh, hello. You gonna treat me? Um. Yes. Uh, right this way. And she'll work on escorting him, him to uh, treatment. And she'll just look at the group there, like, hi. <laughs> Jensen, how did you get the cuts? <laughs> oh. Fun. That's how. care to elaborate since somebody was attacked gotta rule out everybody <laughs> if i attacked someone they'd be dead that's fair but you still haven't answered my question how did you get the... i'm just gonna uh, lean in with like two of the klingon females enough said. and he's he's just gonna pull back his shirt to show a couple of bites like you're good Enough said. Go, go, go! Get those checked out before they get infected. Oh, that's not <laughs> the fun. Nurse, go Come ahead. On, and nurse, take, take care of Jensen. We'll consult and figure out what we want to do with Apatu. I can give you their names if you want. Of the Klingons or the people who attacked my husband? Your husband got attacked. Yes, that's why we're all here. He was apparently struck. In the Ar Arboretum, knocked unconscious, pretty bad blows, seems like hand-to-hand. -hand. Seems like a Vulcan martial artist, if I, which I do, trust Zyler's judgment. Oh, uh, huh. He spits into the plant, just a bit of blood. I'm like, well, no, nah, you know what, I'll heal from this. Let's go, what's that AI called, Rami? Rami. Yes, Commander. Can you show up physical form here, please? Absolutely, Commander. How can I be of assistance? <laughs> yeah. Do you have any information or scanners of the Arboretum? I have several. Any gaps? Processing. Curious. Fuck your... There is a there is a time lapse error in my records that I'm unable to account for. Just within the arboretum, and several and several sections leading up to it, I seem to be missing roughly 15 minutes worth of data. And curious, comparing amounts or compare comparing sensor readouts of the arboretum before and after the uh, error. 
there appears to be several pounds of uh, fertilizing substance carbonite missing. Rami, what is carbonite primarily used for? Carbonite is primarily used on agricultural worlds as a, uh, as a fertilizer that is supported by many uh, photosynthesis, synthesis, yeah, synthesis, photosynthesis processing uh, plants and fauna. However, there are secondary um, uh, there are secondary uses where, if mixed with incendium, it could be a um, not a very effective explosive device. Jensen just makes the explosion symbol with his hand. They're like, yeah. Do we have any was it incendium Inc on board? I am not aware of any incendium present on this station. Run a Maybe. scan of the station, see if you can find any traces of that compound. Understand. Understood. It will take roughly 20 minutes for a full sa station scan to be completed. Target non-critical areas first. If I was going to be making a bomb, I'm going to find a spot that's not important. I agree with that. I want to be kept away, I want to be out of sight, and I want to make sure that there's multiple ways to get to this location. If I make a bomb. But if I was making a bomb, <laughs> I wouldn't be telling you how to do it. Uh, I understand, Jensen. I am secu started security. I was on the same track as you. Rami, start with the lower levels where there's less population and it's more cargo bays. That's where they're most likely going to be assembling anything. Understand. It's also... Man. Oh, what? Go ahead. It was also going to suggest any unpowered areas. If they're being coy, they could also be using an EVA suit to get into a restricted area that's not manned by life support currently. A very ingenious solution. I shall add certain those areas to my... Uh, make, them, make those areas a priority. I shall have a report within 10 minutes. Thank you, Rami. Uh, While you're coming up with that... I kind of want to go look at the Arboretum. All right. And we are going to do a... While you go down to the Arboretum, we are going to have a scene change. So we're going to lose one momentum. As All we, righty. As we cut to the bridge of the USS Lunette that is now in orbit around the planet of Iban. So uh, to, um, for a quick refresher, uh, you have rescued two... Astronauts. Uh, I believe their names were Nyla and Kavos. Um, it would help if I wrote this stuff down. I will do that in the future. That would be. It's in Nyla's Nyla. in two places. Nyla and <laughs> Kavos. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, they have invi and. Um. You are proceeding towards the planet of Eban. Uh, just a quick summary: Eban is a, I believe it is the third in the solar system. It has one moon. Uh, the moon has one settlement on it, as well as a uh, research outpost that is, I believe it was about 10, 20 kilometers outside the district, where the Borg signal is coming from. Yeah. What do you guys wish to do? Hmm. Well, I would very much like to know more about that. Uh, know about the Borg tech. As, uh... Okay. Um, I'm going to do a few assumptions uh, that you were... That you were um, doing a lot of scanning last session just because your character was, was on the ship, just not around. Um, yeah. It would also help yep. if your character was on the bridge instead of Lakila. So, um, I will give you a couple pieces of information that you have gained. Um, the first is that there is a second Borg signature that is coming from one of the moons of the, um, the sixth planet, which is the Class S uh, supergiant star. Uh, it appears to be a, an, orbit, an orbital station that no longer has any power. Uh, it appears to have been a mining station at some point, but is in a very slowly decaying orbit. Uh, it's most likely going to be torn from the orbit of its moon and pulled into the giant 
if left unchecked for within the next 10 to 15 years. Okay. But that's not the source of the signal. Uh, the source of the signal is coming from the moon. Um, there is the... It is coming from within the... Well, beneath the research center. Um, and it, initial sensors are very similar to a that of a crashed scout ship that the USS Enterprise 1701D discovered about... Oh, if I remember my dates right, about 20... Let's see, 30 years since Bo about 45 years ago. It was the one with uh, Hugh, if anyone wishes to mm -hmm. ch remember that episode. Okay. Um, if memory serves, uh, were there people from that planet on the station, or is there nobody there? That station, eh, um, the one on the moon, there are life signs coming from that station. There appears to be 10 uh, Iban life signs on the lunar research station and they're like steady no sign yeah. of like them being in danger okay correct they cool, appear cool. It, they appear, there is no no uh no comms coming in or out of the station at the moment but the couple that you have picked up over your travel time indicates that they are it is pretty much business as normal okay hmm because, like, the technology on that, well, at least with the Borg, is well beyond what this species, at least so far, seems capable of, correct? Correct. That, uh, I, yeah. Doing in character interaction here. Oh, most definitely, sir, which is at least part. Uh, I think that uh, if I might offer an opinion, maybe we should ask them to turn off the signal if they can. Or at least as non-intrusively as possible. We know that Borg technology can be a little bit dicey, and even without an active collective, it may still respond defensively. So, yeah, just whenever we start talking about or talking to them more. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, any sort of Borg technology that's been reactivated, we have to be extremely careful about. Um, I guess who would be our comms officer? I guess Mud. Uh, probably mud M might also be ember but since elh is kind of out today right. i'm just she's sort of just filling a chair for the time being she's brooding <laughs> she's run okay. out of dodgeballs to throw and this signal's been just because i need refreshers yeah. how long has this signal been active uh the signal was first picked up about uh three days ago now okay if I get uh, the timing right. Right. Uh, Ensign Mud, can you open a hailing frequency with the station? I'll take my... Sure! <laughs> uh, research. This is our research, research station beta here. Zempt. Zempt speaking. Who is this? This is Captain Crawford of the spaceship Lunette. Um, we just encountered some of your kind after your one of your ships you built uh, managed to achieve warp. Uh, we're here to say welcome to the universe and ask you a few questions about that station. Oh, they actually did it. Well, good for them. Um, I'm sorry, but this station is classified by the by my superiors, I'm not allowed to talk to anyone outside without permission. I don't care if you have two heads, two arms, or or uh, black skin. You're you are not one. Of, if you're not a ban, well, well, heck, if you're not even part of our society, if you're not ah, if you're not part of the empire, I have nothing to say to you. All right. Well, I guess we'll just have to get. Permission from your superiors, and I'll have Mud cut the communications. Cutting now. Interesting first contact. Oh, it's not entirely surprising, uh, sir. I mean, we it, it'd be like if um, the Vulcans came out and tried to hail the International Space Station. Um, 
which actually I I have to admit I don't remember my my mid 21st century history. I'm not even sure that was really up at that point. I know McKinley was until later. I'm getting sidetracked, but we basically uh, okay. Um, the Americans still had Honolulu at that point, or like a small base in one of their islands. It's like we tried to call one of their military outposts when we should have been directed at. Damn, my mid 21st century history fails me again. I don't remember what capital was you're... irradiated. Pray for your shirt referring to we should have talked to DC. Well, wasn't DC nuked though? I don't remember. Um, Either way, we should. Uh, the metaphor kind of fits. Like, we should probably talk to the. Um, head honcho. You know, uh, I'm, more, I'm more inquiring about the react. Well, the lack of reaction of surprise. We are alien. But yet they were. Nonchalant. Well, I mean, yeah. when you have alien tech right under your planet, there's. Uh, I'm sure they at least figured that there had to be somebody out there. Um, you would think he, they'd be surprised if someone was immediately on their doorstep. Well, considering these structures and system, I did. Uh, I guess you got a point. Space is big, but they seem to be the protocol adherent type. Uh, hmm. Um, are the two Ibon astronauts we saved still on board the Lunette? Oh, absolutely. Um, the only other option would have been to beam them into space, and I don't think you're the kind of crew to do that. So, yes, they are recovering in one of the uh, crew quarters. Okay. <laughs> in either I'll, case... I'll kind of... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, well, in either ca in any case, sir, I, I, I gleaned from some of these sensor scans and some of what the doctor's been sharing with me. They seem to be pretty evenly split and or well i mean they seem relatively split in terms of governance and the it seems that the uh, the imperial faction is the uh, if i took the, what they said correctly the imperial faction may be the ones running this facility so if uh, i don't know whether this is a joint venture or not but we may want to tread carefully in terms of uh, like asking about the tech right away we should still shut it down as soon as we can because Borg tech's just that unpredictable, but hmm. holy just spare thoughts. Should try and get permission as soon as we can. Um and I'll kinda calm down to the crew quarters where the two astronauts are staying. There's a slightly longer than normal pause, and then there's the male voice. Push this button, right? And then I can speak? Hello? No, you got the right one. Um, This is Captain Crawford. Uh, whenever you have time, could you come up to the bridge of this ship, please? Oh, of course. Uh, we will be there shortly, Captain. Uh, Dr. Galen, do they seem to be recovering well, I'm assuming? If they weren't, they would not be in quarters. Fair enough. I'm sorry. I need to disable my snappy comeback routine. Oh, no, it's fine. Personality's fun. Okay. So, as soon as I remember where their tokens went, they will appear on the bridge. And they step out, and their eyes are still filled with wonder at this magical starship. This is <laughs> gorgeous, the uh, female says. Captain, you have a magnificent ship. Are all your ships this big? Oh, there are some that are bigger. Incredible. Now, um... I know that from the brief interaction we had, uh, your species has different factions, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, is there a specific one that's in charge of the research station on your moon uh, I suspect that would be Ma uh, the Nyla speaks up I believe those would be Ma 
my my people, sir. The um, the Casaval Empire, sir. Um, I'm not and, completely. I'm sorry, I've I don't know that anyone or what they're doing on there, sir. I was. That's wasn't. I didn't need to know. All I knew was that there was something, but that was it. Well, that something is quite dangerous. Um, is there a way that we can get in contact with the leader of your faction specifically? Cavus uh, puts on a bit of a concerned face. Captain, there's the uh, protocol for alien species contact is that both leaders must send a representative equally so as one side does not out influence the other you have you have to understand that dis, both despite our people working together at such a on such scientific endeavors there's still a huge amount of tension and of course. for your species to only speak to one side would be a grave insult to my government. Of course, um, new species. Um, where can I get into contact with both of your leaders then, so I can get an unbiased conversation? Of course. Um, our radio frequencies uh, logbook should be within the uh, remains of our ra- of our uh, ship. Our radios were pre-programmed with uh, frequent with the frequencies needed to contact uh, the joint mission control. Of course, now that you've now that you're reaching the orbital, uh, ah, now that you're reaching our moon's orbit, you're no doubt appearing on military sensors all over the globe. So I wouldn't be surprised, sir, if or captain, if they would be the first to reach out to you. However. I can. We can go and retrieve the uh, radio if you'd like. Um, I believe we could actually, because if do we have that in our warp bubble right now? Like repairing it? I or some kind of field. I believe you had pulled it into a shuttle bay. If I recall, if my notes were right, is that or am I assuming I something? It, I think you guys did pull it in. Yeah, we did something of the sort yeah. at least. Um, Lieutenant Yamato, would you be able to? access the radio frequencies of the Yvonne ship remotely from here? I can do my best, sir. Okay. Uh, that would be a control plus engineering with a difficulty of two. Uh, I will spend some threat to increase it to two because of the radi- high radiation contamination in that bay for still happening. Um, so if you have computer systems or... Um, I have computers as a focus. Yeah, that would work well enough. Okay, so control engineering? Mm Mm-hmm. We do have a momentum if you want to buy a third die. Hmm. Let's see. Um... We lose it anyway at a scene change. Yeah. Sharp! Yeah. Sharp! Cool. Applicable focus. And here we Oh boy. Oh boy. Do you have anything that would let you re-roll that talent or anything? Um, let me check. Doesn't sound like it. Um, one, I let, oh, I have computer expertise. Oh, that would be like computer systems. Yeah. Uh, I think the only I, thing that could let you re-roll at this point is what, like determination? Determination or, or, or a, a control, control engineering would work, but. You mean a cautious sound, engineering? Yeah, cautious, my bad. Cautious engineering. Doesn't sound like it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the. Um, not being 
so your sis the sis ah the interfacing systems were not properly calibrated well enough and the uh the rocket ships uh computers send out a uh tight b or a uh broadcast automated distress alert uh, oh jeez. Good uh, going there. Captain, I <laughs> sorry. I think I, that we that that I I, I oh jeez. Well, that's uh, I Captain, I, I I good news and bad news, I guess. Uh, turn it off if you can. Um uh it, it wasn't a uh it was a distress signal over uh, radios, so... Oh, gotcha. Uh, Chief Ember just poked her head up from her tactical console. Uh, Good job, Lieutenant. Uh, Captain, we are receiving um, lock-ons of several different weapon systems from all over the planet, and we are receiving hails from two separate sources from the planet. Um, put them both on screen. Uh, You, uh, they uh, immediately are two very, uh, stone-faced individuals, uh, two very stone-faced individuals wearing, uh, military rank. Attention, alien vessel, you have a, a, you have breached our solar space, you have stolen our... Space, you have stolen our test ship and have kidnapped, if not killed, two of our brave explorers. I can assure you that your two explorers have been done no harm, and I'll kind of wave them both into view. It's radio. Oh, it's radio? It's radio. There's no, there is no uh, visual uh, component Oh, gotcha. They may be good, but they're not that good yet. Gotcha. Um, I'll kind of wave them both over to speak. They, they each uh, head over to a Master Chief's shoulder and sort of just speak into the console as if they were trying to speak into a microphone. The male speaks first. General, this is Lieutenant Second Grade or Lieutenant Flight Officer Second Grade Cavus reporting. Call sign Beta Charlie 3. We are unharmed and have actually been brought back to life by our rescuers. They do not appear to mean us any harm at the moment, sir. And then Nyla speaks. This is this is a flight officer Nyla. Call signs uh, second Charlie Alpha 3. We are I confirm the situation. We are miraculously healed from their technologies i don't believe they mean us any harm and they might know of the saviors if i may say sirs and i am captain crawford of the federation starship lunette um we learned that your species was about to break warp and it's our protocol here at the Federation to make first contact with those that are about to do so, so we can introduce them to a wider universe. Um, we mean no hostilities, and we can gladly give back your explorers and your ship. We just simply wanted to establish peaceful relations, none of harm. There is a stunned silence over the radios as both parties digest what have just been told. This is General Mirasol of the Casaval and of the ah no nope, that's not the general of the Silatine Alliance na- naval forces. We have to initiate ah, alien contact procedures. Captain, you are well. This is well above my pay grade, sir. I must advise that your ship stay in stationary orbit, and any attempts to power on any weapons or engage in 
further communications within the system until our our designated contacts reach out to you with proper protocols might will be taken as an aggressive action against our people and as soon as i hear that i'll look to mud and kind of like make some kind of hand motion to stay and basically cut off impulse power i do so silently And this is uh, the other voice speaks. My name, my name is Deacon Kataris of the Casaval, of the of the Casaval Empire's Holy Armed Forces. We welcome you to our world, and our and our Grand Patriarchs will love to speak with you shortly. We too have will have to enact our first contact pr protocols. As soon as we can find them within our holy libraries, it has been some time since they have been properly uh, brought out. I look forward to your to you gracing our world with your presence. And I being graced with yours. And with that, the uh, signals uh, cease. And, and I assume that the weapon systems are still locked on. Indubitably. Alrighty. Yes, uh, you have also captured the attention of several uh, satellites, not both uh, military and commercial. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be on this planet's version of TMZ later. Great. Quite possible, great. yes. <laughs> Standing at yellow alert with shields up, just powers not <clears throat> on, or weapons not on. Caleb's just going to look to the captain and smile like Cheers, Captain. You get to wear your nice suit. And as he says that, he just <laughs> flicks on his arms and his his suit changes into the ambassador outfit. Oh, I didn't want to have to break out the dress blues, but I figure I, well, I figure it was going to be the case. Um, for diplomatic protocol, we need to observe in this case. I obviously understand first contact's a pretty big deal. Um, but beyond treading lightly, technology offline should still remain the top priority as soon as we can manage something. Yeah. Right. Uh, sorry, you were going All to say something? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. After about a half hour of tense waiting on the bridge, um, even Nyla and Cavus have gotten bored with all the blinky displays and have found some place to sit down out of the way. Uh, there is a single communication coming, um, which appears to be aimed th through one of the nearby military satellites. Uh, patch it through, Master Chief. All right. Uh, what sounds is at first a very um, intricate blare of brass instruments and uh, some sort of fanfare. Mud just rubs his ears and go, "Ow!" I am. Yeah. I am Arch Sufis Firin the Third of the Casaval Empire, and I, I have been graced with this greatest of pleasures to welcome you to the planet of Ebon on behalf of the Casaval Empire. I am Consulate Zarb of the Celestine Alliance. You are to, uh, we welcome you to our world and advise that you please send a, a diplomatic landing party to these coordinates. Your safety is assured while you're on world. How, and as a show of uh, trust, we have deactivated our weapons platforms pointed in your direction. We hope that you will treat our soil with the same reverence that we do. Of course. Uh, and I assume these would basically be good, like, beam down coordinates. Or, or... Uh, correct. Okay. Yeah, he does. The uh, He sends you or you receive uh, coordinates of a beam down site. It is on the largest continent. I see. Well, uh, I assume that you'll be coming with us, Nihilus 
and Nylon Cavus, and, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's go meet some new people. And he'll dismiss himself from the bridge to get into his dress uniform. Mud will speak up. May I suggest, sir, that we take a uh, shuttle down? They might not be expecting our uh, sudden appearance. Uh, next on an idea, Ensign Mud. Uh, we'll do that. Okay, we have a landing party. Uh, so aside from Nyla and Cavus, who's going to go? Uh, Crawford's definitely going. Mm-hmm. I think that's just protocol. Yeah, Lars. Lars say probably should go if uh, if only uh, to have a tech person on hand. Uh, and uh, Mud will fly the ship, but won't necessarily be part of the party. Okay. Uh, and Gail it's all of it. Yeah, Sullivan Barnett, much to his, uh, I-, I will leave that to the captain, whether he would like a science expert along. On one hand, uh, Barnett might protest because he might not handle things so well down on the surface, but on the other, you know, he might be able to do the science speak. Galen's going to walk up to Barnett and he's like, I would love it if you joined us. It would be a good test of your... Constitution to handle the shuttle ride down. Oh. Turbulence. Just pats you on the back. Like, Come now. <laughs> With that, Barnett is going. <laughs> um, Does that mean we're leaving Ember in charge of the ship? Uh, seemingly. I, yeah, I almost feel like it'd be good to take her with us, just in case. I have a thing that does go wrong. For. Okay. I have multitasking as a talent, which means I can... Well, I guess it specifically says bridge station. Never mind. I have, still have a three in security. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll leave Master Chief Ember in charge. Aye, Captain. I have the bridge. Okay, so... The first time in history, Master Chief gets to be in charge of a starship. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the Lunette is a fairly cramped ship and therefore only has access to the shuttle pods. So it is a very tight fit for all of you to to cram into one on the way down. But, cram in you do. Um, Oh, if it's a tight fit, I'll deactivate myself and have someone hold my ring. Okay. (laughs) Right. But probably still going to be a few cases of, get your elbow out of my sight! Yep, that's um, probably going probably. to happen. Um, the traffic is uh, fairly... Uh, it appears that they have invented anti-grav cars. There are several flying vehicles all over the place. Um, but as you get closer to the uh, landing zone, uh, you notice, of course, that there is... Many of them have been cleared out of your way. There is a f- decrease in civilian traffic and an increase in military traffic. Do I get to do a task to see if I land? Would you? Um, sure, you might. Yeah, you might need the momentum just in case. So let's roll a uh, control pus, control con with a difficulty zero. Starship pilot work as? I think that would be an acceptable one. All right, control con twenty. Focus. Two momentum. Nice. Nice. Yep. Two momentum. You, br- uh, despite the cramped uh, quarters, it is a very smooth ride. Uh, no turbulence. Um, no, no unexpected deviations of flight, and you are brought down in a fairly massive courtyard. And we'll just cut to. Ah, let's reopen my tabletop here. We'll cut to here. Okay, so Mud is currently just staying on the ship. 
I believe, and everyone else is sort of coming out. Uh, you come out in a fairly massive convention center. I couldn't really find anything large enough to convey the scale without going 240k-ish, and that wasn't the look I was going for. The architecture is clean, uh, very curved, either graceful curved lines or very straight rigid ones, lots of glass, and quite an immaculate city. Uh, very clean. Um, there are roughly 1,000 people, um, all gathering around to get a look at the aliens who have come from their spaceship. Um, so, who wants to get off the shuttle first? Um, I think it's only right that, uh, we'll have Captain Cronford step out first with the two explorers behind him. Okay. There is a gasp of surprise as Captain Crawford steps out, and it is immediately replaced with the loudest cheering and adulations that you have ever heard outside of a punk rock concert as the two astronauts are seen stepping out behind. Uh, two individuals step forward from the crowd, or two individuals step forward from a large podium at the end of the courtyard and step forward to meet you. In near perfect unison, they stop at approximately two meters in front of you. Um, the top one, uh, Zarb, uh, stands at attention and gives a quick rigid salute, whereas Arch Sufis Firin III does a uh, sort of uh, does or sort of almost brings both fists closes them up almost pushes his belly in and bows deeply and they stand upright we welcome you to the planet of Iban it is we did when we set forth to explore the stars we we knew we were not the only ones alone. We ah we knew we were not the only ones out there, but we did not expect to be greeted so quickly. As I'm sure, um, I'm Captain Crawford, as you were talking to earlier, and he'll kind of point to the individual members of the senior staff he has with him. This is our doctor, Lieutenant Galen. Our science officer, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett, and our chief engineering officer, Lieutenant Yamato. I, I must say the architecture here on your planet is quite beautiful. Thank you. Um, Oristin was a is a joint venture of cooperation between our two powers. It is the hope that one day our entire planet will look like this. Well, if this is any indication, I'm sure it will happen. Uh, if you will follow us, please, Captain. And the uh, as uh, Consulate Zarb leads uh, Captain Crawford away, um, Arch Sufis pulls Nyla aside, and the two begin a very hushed and whispered or a very rushed and whispered conversation. I'm going to turn to Galen. I, I don't suppose that uh, you can adjust hearing sensitivity on your uh, with, uh, with your programming, can you? I'm not a infiltration hologram. I'm a medical hologram. It's uh, a pity. I'm sure there's some ethical subroutine against that. Blast. Actually, there isn't. But it's a choice. Oh. Um, damned inconvenient choice right about now, but... Mm. Smiles for now. Alright, uh, Yam... Uh, are you doing anything, uh, Yamato? I think they said there'd be RB in Discord. Oh, did he? Uh, did he? Okay, my bad. I need a fourth monitor. I can't keep all these windows straight. <clears throat> oh, they're oh, back okay. now, though. Ah. 
Hey, uh... Hey, oh. Uh, so, um, are you... There's just... Everyone is just sort of mingling about right now on the, uh, large, uh... Ah. In the, uh, large square that you've been greeted on. Is there anything that Yamato would like to do at the moment? Um... We're mainly just, uh, taking a look at the architecture and technology. She, it's, uh... Te tech is her thing, R&D is her thing, and she can get inspiration from just about anywhere. Alright. Um, most uh, technology appears to be that of late 21st century. Um, minus the warp drive, of course, but they've just broken that. Uh, there is a significant amount of automated systems in the area. And there still appear, judging from the amount of crowds, paparazzis are still a thing. So, paparazzi are always a thing. They are They're indeed. I actually would like to do one little thing that I. Well, I'd like to move over to Cavus real quick, if okay. possible. Yeah, Cavus uh, is about to head towards a consulate Zarb, but until you intercept him. Uh, hey, um, first, haven't met um, uh, Lieutenant Marcus Sullivan Barnett. Uh, Alexi, I guess. Um, questions, and you are the only person from this civilization I have properly met. Uh, Cavus, was it? A pleasure. Uh, Alexi? Yes, I am Cavus. Uh, whatever name you would prefer. Uh, so they're telling us that this is a this is a joint venture on this planet, and you'd mentioned as uh, we. We heard your hail. You mentioned that this was a joint vent, or that the space program had also been a joint mission. Uh, tell me, how long exactly has this cooperation been going? Uh, this, I was recruited to the program four years ago to begin on my astronomical training. I believe that the planning has been in the works for at least two years prior to that. So, he sort of shrugs and goes, could be about six, seven years, I would think. Well, guess just, uh, just natural progression of friendly relations, or was there, it, would you say that there, uh, point where your two nations felt a common impetus of sorts out of curiosity to start working together as they have. Um, I'm no sociologist um, lieutenant, but if I had to guess, I would say that the... Uh, my, my nations, or my nation, has been encouraged to seek uh, resources beyond our, beyond our planet for some time. As the... Um, as the Cassavals have sort of laid claim to the moon and most of its resources, we need to push forward. However, uh, the Cassavals are very, very interested to find out what happened to the uh, Ravagers. Or, sorry, I think you used the term Borg? Yeah, those are, those are the ones right there. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, they... They see they held them in. Well, I'm sure you will receive much from our overzealous Arc Fucris over there, or Arc Sulfus over there. Basically, the Casaval Empire united out of fear of them, and now that they're gone, they want to find whatever took them away and start worshiping them. More or less, no. I'm. Not a. I don't really care one way or the other, but that's how they seem to work. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. The, I'm. I myself am not for. Uh, for all the superstition, save for the great bird of the galaxy. That's uh, that's. That's the real stuff there. I should probably stop talking. Thank you though. Uh, go talk to your superiors. Do what you want. Lovely planet you got here. Marcus is realizing he's starting to say a few things he probably shouldn't, so he starts moving his hands elaborately. 
<laughs> he um he bows slightly at the at the shoulder and moves away to uh, talk t- to talk to Consulate Zarb, who is at the moment inviting Captain Crawford and any representatives of this Federation to a state dinner. At the state dinner, I'm assuming that the Arch Sufis would be there as well. Absolutely. Uh, during this during this stage, it is imperative that both um, the Celestine Alliance and the Castle Empire maintain equal. Uh, ties to the to any newcomers to our planet. Of course, well, I'll invite my senior staff along, and I'm sure they'll be as honored as myself to join you. Excellent. Hmm. Oh, and speaking of equal ties, Arx Arx Sufis. Um, Arc Sufis wearing all a uh, bright right, bright white robes and a uh, tipped hat that doesn't that looks very similar to the Pope hat of Earth. Um, sort of diplomatically pushes the uh, consulate aside and grasps each uh, one of uh, Captain Crawford's hands in one of his in each of his hands and once again uh, bows. Captain, Nyla has told me great things of your Federation. To think that you were able to save their lives from severe radiation poisoning, you truly are blessed. And she also tells me that you might know what what has happened to the great destroyer, or the great ravagers of our systems. Yes, um, it's blessed to meet you as well. Uh, out of character, we do know what killed the Borg, correct? Or do we not? Uh, correct. It was, um, it was the Federation. Nope, it was... Oh, uh, the Kaliar. Yeah, the Kaliar, or Saliar. I've n- never actually heard it pronounced properly or officially. Kaliar or Saliar. Uh, basically, they were... Th- long story short, the Saliar are, were a, are a race of techno-magical beings, for lack of a better term, who through a series of time temporal shenanigans that may or may not have been the Starfleet's fault to begin with uh, created the Borg several millennia ago Uh, they finally came back in contact with Starfleet uh, connected the dots had the final picture of the Borg shoved in their face realized oh yeah we should probably do something about them snapped their fingers and basically rewrote every single Borg drone's uh, nanoprobes to revert to their original DNA. And okay. then all of the Borg drones were given a choice to come with the Saliar to a distant galaxy or stay behind. And 99.999% of the Borg drones took them up on that offer. So, long story short, Space Wizards did it. Yep, Space Wizards did it, and the Borg drones literally all magically vanished, leaving all of their technology behind. Uh, gotcha. Read the not- Read the novel verse, everybody at home. It's a it's a fun trip. It's <laughs> both the most brilliant and most stupid explanation I could imagine. But this is not a book review, so that's what we're doing. Yeah. With. All right. Um, we'll be more than glad to give that information to you at the steak dinner that the consulate has proposed. Oh, a splendid captain. I look forward to hearing all about your uh, federation and your enlightenment. Or your enlightened ideas. As well as to uh, share what what marvels we can. I'm sure it is nothing of the grandiose achievements of your uh, of your state. But we will do what we can. We still have much to learn. I'm sure you'll be able to impress us, Arch Sufis. Um, at this point, um, Captain Crawford, you receive a communication from the from Ember on the um, Lunette. Captain, can you talk in private, sir? Um, just one second, Master Chief, and I'll kind of, you know, look to the cons on the Arch Suvis. If you'll excuse me for a minute, and I guess the most private place would probably be back at the shuttle. Most likely. And I'll just walk back into the shuttle, and as soon as the doors close, 
eh, close. Uh, this is Captain Crawford. Go ahead, Master Chief. Uh, sir, we have, of course, not activated our weapon systems, but that has not prevented us from using our scanners. Um, we've got f deep scans of the uh, f of the moon facility, sir. Captain, we are detecting armed gravimetric torpedoes on or deep underground. I don't think these guys. I don't think these uh, people know what they're playing with, Captain. And okay, she said they were activating. They were. They're live. Oh boy. I, I've um, seen one of those things just blow half a moon apart, sir. Okay, so they don't know they're there right now, is what you're saying? I'm, I don't know, sir. Um, this, the radiation generated by the Borg wreckage is making it very difficult to see. Most likely, sir, they have active. They probably have activated them unknowingly, sir. Okay. Um. Do what you can to get hailing frequencies to them. See if they can get themselves out of there. If they can't, um, I guess our best option would be a mass transport. Uh, I'm going to go tell both the consul and the Archduchess about this. Uh, keep me updated on the situation. Crawford out, and yes. he's going to step out. All right. And on that note, we are going to cut back to the station. Because when has Star Trek ever done a scene change where there wasn't heightened climax? Okay. Cliffhanger! Indeed. Okay, so you wanted to look at the... in uh, Where was it? It was the Arboretum. Wow. That's yes. an Arboretum. That is indeed an Arboretum. Uh, let's see. So, this is actually the first time that we've used this. So, first time for talent. So, we have Commander Ooh. Dalrum, who wishes to check out the Arboretum. Who else wishes to join him? I would well, like to activate Ensign Rafati, if possible. Okay. And if is that the new security? Yep. Person? Okay. Ensign Zan Rafati. Um, okay. I would like and... to get... Uh, let's get Specialist Nia in on this. Okay. Miss Hennis Ebeck will probably join in as well. Sure. Okay. L Lieutenant Ebeck. Okay. So we have Zan Rafati, uh, Miss Ebeck, and sorry, who was the third? That was Mr. Naya. Naya or Nia, either or. There we go. And then Jensen. Of course. Oh, has Jensen recovered from his uh, wounds? Ooh. Oh, he decided to follow right after. Ah. He didn't get checked out. <laughs> it looks a little rough. Typical Jensen. Okay. And Zan Rafati looks a little smaller than everyone else. Let's fix that. <laughs> okay. Look at the little officers. <laughs> <laughs> Did your mommy let you out today? Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I believe everyone is more or less the same size now. Okay, so the Arboretum is a very lovely um, part of the station um, where there are actually several biomes that would be available to uh, walk through um, due to budgets, of course, and what's available online. All I have is this one, but there, w anyone of curious, anyone could come to, say, a desert uh Arboretum, or one of a much lusher jungle, or even something that would simulate a clifftop environment for the more avian style species. Hmm. Uh, Roseanne and Ebak already there, like investigating? Let's say so, yes. Most definitely. I'll walk up to them. Report. Uh, let's see. I'm. Very much trying to figure this out. So uh, he uh, he's going to do like a slight. Uh, he's going to do a bit of a tumble forward, just way out of nowhere. This stone is not terribly comfortable. So a Susman practitioner, hmm, they probably would have gotten a little bit roughed up unless they did it on the grass. Do you remember a tricorder? Of 
course. Everyone has tricorders, of course. That's right. Where did I put mine? This, uh, I'll you say now, Zan out. seems all sorts of disheveled. <laughs> I'll pull mine out and give it to him. Report, please. Right. So, we have uh, we've been conducting a uh, we've been beginning to conduct um, stages of investigation, and we have some of the details, of course. And injuries were clearly caused by a Susman practitioner. Um, level of experience and where their most likely angle of attack would have been. Can I do like a investigation check Absolutely. to determine um see what i can pick up both uh, either from the tricorder or just uh yeah uh let's do um, let's do insight plus security um Sounds we will good. add this all set at a difficulty of one just because you've had a lot of time already in here great so insight security um and i investigation focus if that's okay i believe that would be succinct or that would work yes either that or forensic science hopefully uh, yeah either or that's your one success yeah okay so it would appear that the individual uh or so the victim was in the f uh back area of the uh of this of the arboretum where the supplies are kept for feeding and growing the plants um it would appear that the that uh he had opened up the fertilizer storage uh sheds uh, just before he was attacked the assailant uh he was either not deemed as a threat or went unnoticed until the attack began as there appears to be, judging from the wounds on um, the victim's body, uh, he didn't get to strike back much. So there was no sign of bruised knuckles or broken uh, broken knuckles, as as one might expect from a fist fight. Well, sir, I, quite frankly, it seems as though the attack was one relative element of surprise and not just say by sneaking up necessarily on the opponent uh, on the unfortunate victim in this case no this is someone more that the assailant maybe or rather the assailant had some sense of familiarity that uh, when they approached they did so without necessarily uh, without provoking even the slightest fear response necessarily by the time they Threw out every blow, it was already too late, more or less. Quite unusual in several circumstances. I would suggest that it was someone he knew. Does that mean it could be a crime of passion, or was there some untoward conduct with the Jensen's other Jensen's just going to put his hand on his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, he's and just it doesn't make... squeeze us slightly. <laughs> just with a little squeeze. It's also unusual because Zeusman is typically a more defensive form and to evade and uh, to come and attack you. Crewman, <laughs> the person that was attacked was my husband, so it makes sense that they'd be attacking to get me distracted. Don is going to just blink for a few moments. Yes, that, that speaks to motive, indeed. Hmm. Commander. Uh, and I'll Neil will kind of go aside a bit. Uh, Rami. Yes. Um, if I were able to, would you be able to assist me in any way in terms of maybe clearing up some of that lost footage and getting it back? I'm sorry. I've been uh, I have been unable to access any lost images. Or any lost footage. I know that there is a gap, but I am unable to ascertain why. Hmm. I have a question and... for you, Rami. Yes. Any other gaps occurred in your system besides all the hallways leading up to this point? I have been anticipating this question, and I must admit that there is one other that I'm 
that I have been trying to figure out. But it may or what? may not be... Uh, well, sorry. Ah, sorry, GM redaction. There are two in there are two uh, gaps in my memory that I am attempting to account for. One is uh, roughly 15 minutes at 0600 hours this morning outside uh, quarters 96 beta on deck 12, and the other would be a half hour gap surrounding the at 0730 outside and in outside the premises and inside the premises of the eclipse whose quarters are in that level that the most likely individual in that area would be the bartender Maza seems too easy uh, that's what I was thinking Rami there Sorry, do you have something yeah. you want to say, Chief? Or Commander? Rami, is there any other residents in that area that would make... that would be made a target? I am unaware of anyone. The other... The others would be... Most of the others either serve regular maintenance duties within engineering. Uh, three serve as uh, training nurses. Two are Two are crewmen, serving with, um, uh, serving on maintenance shift gamma, and one would be Lieutenant Derval, who was on station at the time. I have an odd question for you, Rami. I seem to be getting a lot of them. Uh, any, you've been able to record every bit of information the station has to offer, between surveillance of. Everyone walking through the corridors, barring any private locations or, you know, unsanctioned locations to be recording people. Are you able to monitor oxygen outputs, intake, filtration, all of that, correct? Within a degree, yes. My, I am, I typically, um, most sensors are kept to detect, um, at risk levels or at risk levels of dangerous or healthy gases, so that I may properly alert individuals within the confined areas. If I were yeah. my, while the station's sensors or internal sensors are uh, very high, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A, a very high precision. It is. It would generate far too much data and far too much computational time to look uh, to keep track of every minute level. Any readings coming back to you that seem like to be too perfect? Like it's a recording? I am currently unaware of anything that would be would be modified as such. However, I must remind you that you are asking a system to examine itself. And a sick system might not fully understand that it is sick. How integrated are you with the station systems? If someone was tampering with a replicator, would you pick up on that? Or would your program itself be compromised? Depending on the... Um, if what, if a system was intruded upon to which it could be... to which it could cause harm to an individual or other individuals, yes. I would be... I would at least be programmed to notify the on-shift supervisor, either of maintenance or security, depending on my response protocols. However, I am not. Uh, I am not allowed to directly take control of any systems, bar without the approval of two senior staff. Oh, Commander, we do have a bit of a lead. It was someone he knew, according to um, Specialist Zan. Or it was Over. somebody he didn't su suspect. That's probably the better term. We can look over people he's met, interacted with, uh, and also cross-reference anyone who might have some Vulcan training. And training with possible explosives. It's a good place to start. 
I'm also wondering if they did this to distract me. Oh, you do seem to be here at the moment, Commander. Thanks for stating yeah. the obvious. What is less obvious and more interesting is who would be able to, uh, as he reads over the tricorder and seeing some of the supplemental reports that come with this, someone would be doing with that much high-grade fertilizer and oh, clever bomb, more than likely, if one follows that to its logical conclusion, would be able to perhaps provide some compelling interest beyond their own well, I need some time with this. Hmm. Rami, have you been able to find uh, the location of the previous quarry we asked? Now, refresh my memory. Which one was that? That was... We're, we're uh, scanning oh, for... Yes. The... Oh. for scan. oh, yes. I'm unable, to de I'm unable to determine the location of any um, fertilizer that is, outside, that is outside the Arboretum's authorized storage base. Has there been a transport signal recently? I am checking. No, sir. Site-to-site uh, -site transport has been... Uh, has been... Ah. Has been limited to um, officer grades. To officers only due to the limited uh, quarantine that you have placed in effect. As far as I am able to determine, no unauthorized site-to-site tra -site transports or, for that matter, transport to any of the docked ships has occurred. The other thing we'd have to look at, too, is someone has the ability to alter Rami. True. I'm going to head back up to Ops ch and check in with our Vol, since mm -hmm. Vulcan and was in that one area where the sensor net went down, so okay. make sure they're still up there, as well as run a uh, scan myself and see if there's even any blank spots within the station if they have a uh, dampening field. Very well. Um, and I've had a request uh, to go on to take a bio break. So let's pause here. Um, we shall return in roughly 10 minutes at uh, 20 to the hour. Um, Sounds good. So I will see you guys fairly quickly. Allow me to mute the
Okay, welcome back. Uh, I promise next session we'll actually I'll have a proper break screen up with a countdown timer, so anyone l listening in doesn't think th that the audio has cut out. Um, so we were going to who was going where? So Dalrum was heading back to ops. I'm gonna head to ops. Yep. Okay. I would briefly like to intercede with uh, Specialist Nia, if possible. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, at earliest convenience, Nia would also like to uh, maybe request Jensen's assistance in trying to clear up Rami's uh, shady memory. See if we can get some of that footage. Okay, so well, let's do the ref the Rafati and Nia thing first, and then we can talk with Jensen. Uh, and Nia. Nia, whatever. My mistake. I, I, I've always thought Nia, but Nia. semantics. It's um. data versus data. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Nia. Right. Oh. Uh, this was actually... Uh, you kind of beat me to the punch there in the meta, at least. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, I do think that this... Uh, Jensen, though an unorthodox and wholly interesting, indeed wholly worthy of investigation himself, uh, he does raise some good points. Perhaps it may... Uh, I certainly think that closer examination of the computer systems would take a case. Some uh, see if we can find out a little bit more about whether Rami's systems may have been tampered with. Uh, you have some familiarity, I trust, with the main computer system. Of course. Um, is there like any kind of like wall console nearby? Uh, there are several. Um, I should note that Rami's AI core is a separate system than that of the general computers. Right. But yes, we at least try to be at, eh, try to access that missing footage, or would that also require going to Rami's AI core? Um, for something like this, probably. Like this is me just shooting the story where I kind of want to do it because I've made a scene sure. for that. But uh, directly accessing it at the core would probably be the best just because okay. you also have the station also has an ai specialist on board right your your robot two-legged whale yes 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 um <laughs> um mr jensen so i call you by your rank of grelic or jensen's fine you're not human so you don't have to bother with it Okay, then, um, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like you to come with me to Rami's AI core. I think our best chances of getting into our system and seeing, well, what's what and seeing what's been tampered with is our best way to get directly to the source, if you would. I'm sorry, you want me, a brain in one of the most heavily classified computer cores within Starfleet's own jurisdiction. How much do you like your posting? I mean, I like it quite a bit, but seeing as you're, an, as I've read, um, an expert in sabotage, I could at the very least send you what information I'm getting. I'll tell you what. I'm... Uh... I think that this is a case where, given that there is a considerable amount of potentially explosive material somewhere on the station, I'd say it behooves all of us to learn a little bit more about whether this is present or not. So, if it um, will satisfy your own diplomatic sensibilities, give you some sense of plausible deniability, I will delay my own little trip that I was planning on taking and just watch over your shoulder in this case. Um, has uh, really Dolrum left for ops yet? Uh, that's up to Dolrum. Not yet. I'm over reviewing things with others. I can probably safely assume he's picking up some bits and pieces of this conversation. So I'm just going to kind of look over to him and be like, I know he's Breen, but given the circumstances, it makes he could be helpful. Specialist. It makes sense, specialist. Just keep and an he, eye on him. Go. Of course. And he'll kind of nod to both uh, Ensign Rafi Rifati. Is that how it's pronounced? Yes. Okay. Ensign Rifati and Jensen be like, 
All right, uh, we've got permission from the commander. Let's go. Biggest grin on Jensen's face. <laughs> okay. So, the trip to the AI core is deck... Where? Which deck is the AI core on? <laughs> Do you go review something? If you say so. So the AI core is actually on deck 89, which is pretty much the de pretty much dead center of the station, located one deck below the main computer core. It is uh, water cooled for two specific reasons. Uh, the first being that Rami's or that the amount of heat generated by the processing of the system is astronomical, and two, its programmer is a freaking dolphin. <laughs> so, you step into, um, after donning a series of uh, Starfleet-approved wetsuits, uh, you enter the second airlock as it floods you and pressurizes you to the mostly aquatic environment that is Rami's AI core. Swimming around in happy circles, uh, using some extendable arm appendages to interact with some of the consoles is the Cerberus Station's Artificial Intelligence Specialists, Specialists Meloon, otherwise a dolphin. Because Starfleet has teased cetacean operations since Enterprise D, and I figured, why not make it a reality? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sensing the pressure change, uh, he is already swimming in your direction by the time you step out. Hello, hello, hello! It squeals as your uh, autumn, as your translation matrix turns squeals into uh, whichever languages you prefer. It is rare to see visitors off here, down here, around here, in here. What brings you by, in, under? Uh. Space and water, I guess, share some similarities in relative dimension, direction, and whatnot, although gravity is always the reassuring pull. Oh, greeting specialist. I am Ensign Riflati, and this is Specialist Nia, Mr. Jensen. Um, we just wanted to drop by, see if we could get a closer look at some of Rami's... Um, some of Rami's systems. Just taking a look at a few time indices here. As a specialist, I believe you can explain yourself more than adequately. Absolutely. Certainly. Yes, yes. If you will swim this way, please. Her direct access console is over here, here, and here. If I may ask, inquire. There is an individual person, specimen, of non-Starfleet is he allowed, permitted, permissible? Hmm. Oh, he's... Eh, everything's above board in this case, don't worry. Uh, uh, rest assured, I... Uh, uh, I will... Just for everybody's assurance. Uh, no offense, uh, Ambassador Grelick of Jensen... Like I should stand on some ceremony, but I couldn't help but overhear the uh, with the special earlier. Uh, fair enough. Uh, what is it that you? What is it that uh, you are looking for, seeking, inquiring about? Well, as I understand it, we need to uh, we need to examine uh, Rami's systems closer to certain time indices. Verify that nobody through any remote access may have tampered with the systems in any way. Uh, oh, corruption! Naughty, nasty, icky, unwanted. <laughs> and at this point, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm having fun with this. Uh, okay, um, so the dolphin is going to use a couple of its arm appendages from its uh, mechanized collar, I guess, to 
uh, start poking away at some of the systems. Hmm. There appears to be... Jensen... Help. Sorry? Jensen's looking at everything meticulously and very slowly examining everything he's seen. <clears throat> well, this is odd, peculiar, different. Ever. S well, don't. Ever. Uh, specialists, Ensign, Grelick. Ever since the Romulans Klingons Ferengi came on board, an individual. There has been a series of codes implanted into Romney to. with specific instructions to ignore certain dates, times, and sections. Can we have a complete list of those? Uh, will you Would you be able to compile the uh, timestamps and dates? Uh, particular emphasis on any which have not yet occurred and sections which um, those may be relevant to. Absolutely, certainly, most definitely. As he pokes, prods, and squeals at the computer, um, it um, begins... Uh, your internal uh, HUD starts scrolling with a list of uh, series and locations of t of blackouts, as well as the codes that were entered to block Romney Romy from acts or uh, from logging the various requests. Would um, it take any sort of investigation check to, like, say? some things in my head, i.e., um, like, are the times corresponding with multiple sections being blocked out? Um, do these codes seem like something Starfleet issue, or is this, like, some other type of hostile intrusion? Is there a task I would have to perform for something like that? Uh, with the amount of data that you're getting, I'll, I'll, tell you the, I'll tell you the information that is you're getting, and then if you wish to make further questions and whatnot, I'll have you make a roll. How's that? Sounds good. Okay, so the information that you're getting. So the first lockout or blank time um, occurred approximately uh, about two hours before the initial explosion. And there was a... Uh, it was a... What was this? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it was down in the sociology area with the in with the covert uh, species surveillance suits, the ones that cloak. Uh, two suits were checked out, and the code uh, the code placed in to delete the record was Starfleet intelligence. Um, then there was the explosion and then f let's see so timeline after that there was the uh co there was the hour-long uh outage just before apatu was attacked at uh about i believe at nope sorry got my timeline mixed up 0600 hours was the um quarters so when maza or someone around Maz's area, was assaulted. Then at 0730, there was the blackout at the bar. Um, at 0800 was the blackout in the Arboretum. Um, at, and then at 0... Let's see. And then at 0900... There is a constant blackout being held in section six of deck. Uh, that was deck. Uh, deck seventy-seven. Um, that is a constant blackout in that area. Hmm. And then there will be another blackout roughly thir uh, at roughly two hours from now. I believe, if I get my internal math correctly, that will be about. 1300 hours. 
Meloon. Acknowledgement, yes. The blackout that's scheduled to occur, do we know the location? Yes, absolutely. The blackout is set to happen at within the uh, within the dignitary quarters. Uh, quarters number 13 Alpha. I'm pulling up references, checking, inquiring. These would be the Romulan delegations. Oh. Mm. Well, that's troubling. Equally so that on... Let's see. Oh, I was reading my deck key incorrectly. Equally so that there's already an ongoing blackout around the dignitary quarters. If, uh, if someone is indeed acting, then they may already, uh, they may be getting into, uh, they could be operating with impunity in this case, even with the relative quarantine that we have. I suggest that if I'm to trust both of you and not knock you out right here, we'll keep this all between us, no reporting, and simply watch. Oh, that is most uh, that is a most interesting proposition there, Mr. Jensen. Don't imagine the commander would be too keen on me at least not saying something to him, but perhaps if I uh, perhaps if officially my reports seem inconclusive or are otherwise delayed, we might have a better chance of intercepting whomever would be involved. That said, questioning the Going in for some follow-up questions with the dignitary shouldn't be that much of an issue, and there may be an opportunity for more digging, shall we say. How about this? You make your report, don't sound too stupid, or it's a dead giveaway, and Nia, I'm going to need your comm badge. In a couple hours' time. Okay, um... In the meantime, do you think don't you think we should try to maybe clear out these blackouts and see what's been happening? Oh, I agree with that. Most definitely. I take it you've never been aboard a ship sabotaging and waiting for it to explode. If any of my countermeasures were disabled, subverted, or changed, I would know and my mission would change. I believe whoever is doing this might have certain cautions in place. Oh. At this point, GM, I'd like to actually um, go over to a console and, if possible, perform some sort of investigation check. I'm Specifically, I would like to um, lead to something, er, like, set it to something individual on the console so that I am working alone for a moment and um, trying to parse it, uh, knowing that I probably have very little... Er, Bearing in mind, I probably don't have quite the level of access. I would at least like to attempt to verify or look for any um, problems in the uh, in the Starfleet intelligence code. Okay, uh, that would be. Up, oh, sorry, I, we weren't done talking. Sorry. I also have the thought now, uh, specialist, that I could actually use uh, if you would come over here. I'm clearing up something i'm waving him over and kind of i want it like gesturing to the bits of code i want to communicate kind of non-verbally to suggest that uh basically seek out the assist to verify the code oh Meiloon is more than happy to assist dolphins are social creatures and not many people come to visit poor Meiloon. <laughs> just look <laughs> <laughs> just have him look slightly to the left as Maylun swims up and give like the kind of nudge, nudge, nudge. like Captain Jack just slightly taken a uh, uh, yeah Jack Sparrow just slightly taken aback but <laughs> smiling politely as yeah okay um so this would be uh this would be an insight plus security. Um, I'm going to say a difficulty of three, and uh, some individual may assist if they'd like. So computer sciences for uh, investigation, uh, pattern recognition, any anything like that would be of use here. 
I'm happy for Mei Loon, and I do have a security focus, or I do have an investigation focus. Sure. Well, well, there's your three successes. Okay, let's see what Mei Loon gives you. You said it was insight security. Yep. I assume none of their focuses apply here. Uh, what does Mei Loon have? Only. Uh, AI, computer science, and debate. I would give... Uh, I would think either would work. Yeah, okay. like computer science would be sufficient. No success there. Yeah. I didn't... Commu- I, hate mail. I said I communicated non-verbally. I didn't yeah. do it well. <laughs> or I didn't say I did it well. That's all right. Okay, so uh, what you are able to ascertain... Um, the the in, uh, the Starfleet intelligence code is both recent and active, meaning that it is not marked as a deprecated or an old code. So it belongs to an active agent. Um, it's the first time. Well, the first blackout is the first time that this code has been active um, within the station or within the lunette, if that's of any import. Um, let's see. Um, near it, you're uh, you're only able to pull up a code name to the um, agent that is associated with it, and that code name is Rush. But uh, beyond that, uh, let's see. There's that. There's that. There's that. Um, but that's about it that you're able to pull up. Mm. Oh, well, without normal. Oh, no. I'm. Re- uh, I'd say that that plenty to find out, but I feel like I've done my bit here. All right. Well, then. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we should do um something sometime. Absolutely. Would love to play. Come for a swim. Um, swimming is fun. Yes. And with that, just going to move back towards the airlock. Well, I think you have enough to take back to your people, I'm sure, at this point, Mr. Jensen. So uh, no need to longer. Uh, specialist, is there anything you would like to particular? Uh, if you want to assist Mei Loon investigating these data breach uh, the data breaches then by all means see if we can get this a little bit cleared up i obviously um oh that seems long since you're keeping your communicator for a while uh, maybe set up a closed channel with dull room and and feel free to let myself know if you find out um that seems like a plan if since you seem to be the one in charge at this point, if that's okay with you, Jensen. Well, actually, I don't follow any of your orders, so... Yes, yes, he he doesn't, and you follow mine, so I... And we all follow the commander's orders, so that's the important part here. Anyway. (laughs) God, why did I just invent this guy now? (laughs) (laughs) I like him already, so... hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, as I said, in a couple of hours, I'm going to be in a comm badge. Oh, I, I'm sure I can help you out in some way or another, Mr. Jensen. All right. Meiloon flaps a flipper, waving goodbye, and then goes about to play with a red ball that's sort of floating on the surface of the pool. Oh... That looks fun. We have a talking dolphin. Yes, yes, you do. In a T-Rex suit. <laughs> um, uh, this isn't out of character. This is in character. <laughs> Nia saying this aloud. <laughs> You'd be amazed what humanity would have had if they simply opened up their mind. Yes. And I imagine we would have considerably less if we continued working. Well. You, anyway. I imagine that they would have considerably less if they continued working with their gene pool the way that they did. Have you seen some of the flaws humans made? 
Oh. Your perfection. Okay. And on that um, <laughs> scathing repartee, we are going to have a scene change, so we lose that momentum. And we are All right. Bye, momentum. Bye, momentum. It was fun while you were around. We'll cut back to the Eban folks. <clears throat> okay, so Captain Crawford, you've just under you've just been informed of a potentially explosive situation brewing on the moon. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm going to uh, as privately as I can uh, pull aside both the consulate and the arch sufis, which I assume would be another pull them into the shuttle situation and just. Here, why don't you come inside and see our lovely vessel computer close the doors and activate privacy mode? <laughs> Basically. But well. Mud is still just sitting in there twiddling his thumbs. <laughs> and He's like, Marcus standing outside just smile. Uh, <laughs> everything's okay here. Yes, yes. Everything's oh. fine. Nothing's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's going to explode. What are you talking about? Um. Uh, no. On your moon, is there a way that if the people in your research facility would need to leave, could they leave quickly? Of course, Captain. There are several escape pods, and it's only a, a five. It's only a ten-minute buggy ride to the um, to the nearby town, or the the nearby lunar colony. What's going on? Um, there's a very dangerous weapon that is under the moon's surface that if they don't leave soon there's the possibility that those researchers could die and I don't want that to happen uh, the two share a sort of a knowing look at one another captain and arch the arch sulfus speaks captain those ordained scientists are up there at our at the uh, Empire's request to study the dis the Reaver or the Ravager's technologies, if to leave now, uh, as they are finding so much data is very unusual. And I understand that, but <sighs> listen, these things. Yeah, yeah, that English is hard sometimes, guys. Um. Those torpedoes have the... These weapons have the capability of blowing up half the moon with just one of them, and out of character, we didn't know how many were there were, correct? Um, Ember said there were two. Okay, so basically enough to blow up the entire moon. Um, is there any way we would be able to pull that piece of Borg technology off without, like... Not saying transport it, but maybe put it in a tractor beam or something of the sort so we can preserve it? The consulate... Uh, Zarb's about... This is, oh. this is me out of character oh. asking. Um, out of character, the... You'd have to somehow find a way to get it through the facility. The facility's built over top of the wreckage. Um, okay. So... Which means likely the torpedoes are are part of the wreckage too probably deeper most likely so um an on-site investigation is probably warranted hint hint wink wink poke poke but right captain to uh arc fus arc sulfus i really should have come up with something a little more pronounceable anyways that's his title yeah, that's okay arc sulfus uh fear the third captain to with all respect the what you're proposing is borderline heresy these days. To disrupt a, an ongoing scientific investigation into one of the um, into one of the greatest scientific finds of our of our time is unheard of. However, if there is something that might cause destruction on a grand scale, they both look and they both sigh. They both share a sort of a knowing nod, and even the Arc Sulfus drops his um, hoity-toity attitude for a second. So long as both of us are there to witness your investigation, that would 
suffice for first con for our contact goals. Okay. Um, and I'll kind of tap my communication badge to contact everyone who's outside the shuttle. Uh, Captain... His thumbs. Yep. <laughs> uh, Captain Crawford to Lieutenant Barnett, Dr. Galen, and Lieutenant Yamato. Um, change of plans. We're going to that moon. Understood, right. sir. Be, be right there. Very well. Uh Understood. Um, just about to start saying something when he tops off the communicator. <laughs> All right. Um, are you taking the shuttle back? Yeah, we definitely okay. are. So you're t you're swapping two Eban heroes for two Eban politicians. Cool. <laughs> what so, the yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, look at your shiny astronauts. Uh, will your world leaders come in here? Thanks. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> there is they, there is a about a five to ten minute annoyingly, annoyingly long wait while the two politicians have to smooth things over with their requisite guards, attachés, and other henchmen and women. Um, but eventually they both step in after shedding some of their formal garb to something a little bit more practical, um, they, set, they set foot in your shuttle and try their best to stay out of their way as one, two, three, four, five, six people, and Galen, if Galen doesn't mater dematerialize, all try to cram into a shuttle pod that's meant for five. Hello, world leaders. Here's a trick. <laughs> 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 Oh boy! One of uh, one of you put this on. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Okay. The, the yeah, well, each other well, Larsa would probably hold the uh, uh, mm. hollow emitter thing if she, if he de if Galen decides to uh, temporarily deactivate. He did, yeah. and just like that. Yeah. Okay, she'll hold on to it. <laughs> The consulate God. raises his fing a single finger like, I have questions, and then realizes that he probably has far more questions than he has time for at the moment. So he just sits in silence. Hmm. Mud just turns around. It's new every day. <laughs> and then starts to pilot. So, sorry, Captain, we did not get a good chance to understand how diverse this federation is and he looks around we can see that you are all of the same species is that correct all the ones currently on this shuttle are but the uh lunette itself and the station i'm also in charge of is a lot more diverse than just this shuttle We are an organization of many races. Splendid. Uh, now, Cap um, Captain, are you heading to the ship before you head to the moon, or are you heading to the moon directly? Um, ship has a better searching power. Yeah. Yeah, we're going back to the ship. I think that's a better option overall. Okay. Y'all hop on board the ship. Okay. Control con to get out of the... Sure. Uh, Let's run control con to get out because you seem to have used up all the momentum again. So this will be a difficulty zero to make it back to the ship in one piece. Hey. All right. Two, two successes. And have you, uh, have you advanced mud? I did. I gave him cautious con. Excellent. Ah, so he's one of those con guys. Cool. Okay, you are all, and just like that, you will all now be on the ship. Okay, what do you wish to do with the um, ambassadors, for lack of a better term? Bring them to the bridge, or just drop them in crew quarters? Or um, toss them in sick bay, whichever. Uh, I think... We've established enough, at least 
good communication was done to have them be on the bridge since they wanted to watch the investigation. All right. And it is their people that we're saving. It is. Their yeah. People. Uh, they have the same wide eye expressions as the two astronauts as they come on board and immediately um, they take a gasp at uh, Master Chief Ember as um, they ah, sorry Captain we meant no offense if we gave any it's just before we laid eyes on any of the Ravagers that's the that's how we sort of imagined them looking it's perfectly all right. Uh, Mud, if you would, take us in. Aye, sir. All right. It is a three-minute jump from uh, planet orbit to lunar orbit. And what do you... And you are now in lunar orbit. What do you wish to do? If I could interject, um, of course. I uh, as we approach, we'll try and get a better sense of what systems besides the beacon and um, the torpedoes may be active. So if I can conduct a sensor scan, determine like this was built over the wreckage of a Borg scout ship, I'd like to get a sense of like where other power fluctuations might be coming up, whether there's and because, you know, the an errant engine pod activating directly under the settlement would be just as much bad news for us, um, or at least for the research team and us if we go down. Agreed. Versus, okay. yeah. So that would be a sensor, or that'd be insight plus... Ah, sorry. Yeah, insight plus science. Ship can assist with sensor science. Uh, this would okay. typically be difficulty two, but since the lunette has advanced sensors, yes. difficulty of one. Excellent. And my sensor operation focus comes into play. Uh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. That, oh, that's that's burn. real bad. Can you burn your please. determination? Yeah, I was about to oh, say, my. please I... tell me you have a determination that applies. Uh, okay, let's see. <laughs> oh, my. Well, you know, numbers are easier to work with than people, and I think that enough. Then, if the books aren't going to help, then I should. No, that's that's probably not great. Would you take numbers are easier to work with than people? I'd take that. Yes. Bar yeah, Barnett loves him a good sensor suite. So yeah, no more, no determ. Uh, that's my determination for the game. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see. Oh, yes, let me remember how to roll. And actually, just to double check, since this is a sensors check, would reason not be more applicable? Uh, oh, I would think. Yeah, I would think so. I'm still figuring out the difference between reason and insight when to use either. But yes, I think reason would work. Too. Yeah, I, I do agree. I, I love the system Modifius has designed. I think that sometimes insight makes a little more sense, but... Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to complain when the book lets me use my better stat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's. Okay. Uh, okay. There's one success. One success. All right, there we go. The lunette. Okay, so that was one point of momentum. All it cost you was your determination. Hopefully, that's a good trade-off. Yep. Okay. Don't need that kind of planet. Uh, so what you're actually detecting is, so there is. Uh, there are the two um, weapon signatures that have gone live, and they have gone live. They were not, you know, hiding in, you know, they were just, it's not that they were missed, it's they were activated on purpose. Um, you are also detecting uh, what appears um, directed energy pulses from within the station itself. It sounds like there might be a bit of a firefight going on down there. Oh, boy. oh boy! Let's see. That's um, no good. <laughs> based on the based on the free inform, oh, as I understand it, having succeeded that time, I get one free um, momentum to spend for information. Yes, you would. Um, falls within the parameters of what I would get. What do the 
life signs breakdowns look like. So uh, in terms of can I detect where the Abani are, if there's anything... That is not a body. They're a life sign. Okay, yes. so there appears uh, there are still the ten uh, Ebani life sign life signs on board. Um, there are uh, six that are sort of huddled and congested around the uh, torpedoes, and there are four that are apart, I should say, that are closer to the either what you believe to be the control center or other hatchways. Okay, so... Is this up on the screen? I... It, um, I don't imagine I've shared it, but I will post this up and I'll start filling in people. Captain, uh, based, on, uh, based on sensor analysis, it looks like we might have some kind of firefight going down on the surface. Um, detecting oh, awesome. 10 Ibani life signs... Uh, to be near uh, actually near the torpedoes um the other uh, i think that if i'm reading my telemetry right on the bor uh, on the borg outpost i was scanning to rather i was scanning to see if any borg tech had responded um automatically given we know the dangers of borg tech but it seems like this may have been a proper arming sequence of sort from what i can discern um the other four appear to be around certain command post areas um, certain from the layout, sir. Hmm. Uh, I probably should also give you this piece of information. Sorry. Um, the weapons fire is Borg. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh okay. Sorry. Then that would definitely change what I worded. My apologies. Shit. I... Shit. 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 Yeah, no. Not directed at you. This yeah. is Marcus pounding his console. God damn it. I knew this was going to happen. You just send this civilization barely spoke split the atom. Captain, I think that the yes. Borg the Borg tech is it's what I feared. They may have tampered with it in some way and now it's beginning to respond. Or maybe it's received a security directive from somewhere else. This is the problem when you activate uh er, Borg tech. It's just it's that dangerous. It's that dicey. Oh, As, uh, there appears to be some sort of automated uh, Borg defense system. Perhaps I'm not picking up any life signs there, so we can rule out that possibility. Nonetheless, uh, the torpedoes seem to have been properly armed. So systems detected an intrusion from the interplexing beacon, and they're doing this to respond. Okay. Um, well, uh, Lieutenant Yamato, any chance you can shut this down remotely, or do we need to go down to the source? Um, I can certainly try, but our best option would probably be at the source. Okay. Looks like we'll... Let's not risk anything. Let's assemble an away team and get down there. Understood, sir. And for this, I'm pretty sure ELH wouldn't mind if I brought Ember along just as an NPC to add the security escort. Most likely. Oh. Hmm. Mud's going. He has a decent security. Larce's going. <laughs> she... She'll she'll be needed to disarm everything. Plus, she can put up a decent fight with her phaser, and <laughs> this might be a good time to debut the. I will to uh, test the exo tricorder in live combat. Uh, I mean Crawford's got some decent security. Um, yeah. Captain has to stay on the ship, sir. <laughs> this sucks. This sucks. <laughs> oh, but we don't really have anybody we can take down with us. <laughs> yeah, I, I think back. you've left most of the support characters on the station, which is kind of limiting now that I think about it. Um, at least, especially on the tactical side. Um, yeah. You can bring Paul, but he's a diplomacy <laughs> and diplomatic officer. He has like no security. Yeah. 
I mean, oh. did we uh, did we establish that Dura was definitely back on the station? I I just rewatched the archive yesterday, and I don't I don't believe Dura was so. mentioned. So we could bring Dura. Sure, I'll bring Dura. Sure. Let the Kelpian shine. Okay. Uh, so feel is free. Is Galen going down? Uh, I, I guess back. we should probably have. Yeah, I think we should just in case there are any injured down there. Well, and can the Borg touch holograms? They can touch my ring. Oh. I and an energy. Oh. I can. Well, we. Uh... Sorry, we do have precedents where a hologram can take over a Borg. So. That's a cool trick. Mm hmm. <clears throat> I become a tactical drone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And plow down the rest of the tactical drones. <laughs> okay, so away team was Yama was Yamato, Mud, Galen, Barnett, Ember, and Dura. And... Yep. Okay. Uh I'm going to switch out I'm taking persuasion out and I'm switching it with cybernetics. Ah yes, because that's something that holograms can do. Okay, so we are going to cut scenes down to. Um, are we taking type twos or type threes? If you take type threes, I get to take threat. Should I get myself? Would this also be our second time activating Dura? I, think? I believe so. Yes. So yeah. Dura does get an advance. Okay. Let me try and look something up for her, then. Galen's got a smile at Dora and just nod his head like, a pleasure to see you again. And you as well, Doctor. I must thank you on showing me the proper Kelpian tea setup and practices. Well, I'm glad that you like it. Okay. What do you think, guys? Should we take type threes? Because personally, I like the idea of having four plus security. <laughs> yeah, I like that board, as well. <laughs> I'll, I'll stick with a type. I'll stick with a type two. Well, the I was... cost is only if we're taking it, it gets yeah. applied once. Yeah, it gets applied once, so it doesn't hurt. So and, you know, you don't need weapon proficiency for them. Hmm. All right, maybe. All right, if we're gonna take type, if it only applies once, I can take a type three in addition to my type two. Marcus isn't going to be handling a phaser rifle, thank you very much. That's that funny. that would interfere with his tricorder hand. Yeah, I, I mean, she doesn't need. I she if she needs to, she can uh, drop the rifle to go for. A, to go for melee and she'll still have a pistol on hand because the type 2 is basically her default. Mm -hmm. Right. But, yeah, no, we'll, we'll pay the escalation and opportunity costs for right. type 3 phasers. Fair enough. Galen's just happy with his type 1. Alright, so we are going to quickly cut ourselves over to here. <clears throat> And so, giving ourselves the phaser rifles, we spend a momentum, correct? Um, it's opportunity one, escalation two. So yeah. I'm assuming that's so. I take two. two I take two threat, and what opportunity means is it basically tightens the story that go. You basically lose out on a couple options. So by taking, oh, yeah. Okay. So that's what opportunity cost means. I believe, if I've interpreted the rules right. Basically, by beaming down with phaser rifles, that means you would have a more aggressive approach to a problem rather than say, hey, let's talk to these Borg that are potentially assimilating and killing everyone. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, right. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, you beam uh... down into what... you Into the center uh, dome of the research colony. Uh, there are two very haggard... Um, Iban individuals. Uh, one who one who is bleeding rather profusely from a shoulder wound, and the other one who is exhausted just trying to uh, keep up with various system alerts as they pop up. 
Uh, she looks up and doesn't even flinch as she goes, Oh, you're the aliens. Are you here to help or hurt? Make it up. Make uh, up your mind. Galen is immediately going right to her with Tricoder out and the Hypospirin on the other hand, and he's like doing his thing. All right. And just glancing around quickly, mm -hmm. is the Borg weapon system the only thing that's firing off? There's nothing humanoid or anything like that. Uh, there's no Borg. We there's no Borg weapons in this part yet. Um, you do hear sound of weapons fire coming down from one of the large, one of the uh, adjacent domes, or I should say the staircases that are leading down into the uh, subterranean sections of this facility. Look, you really shouldn't blame them. She, uh, she says, look, okay, I know what you're trying to... You're thinking that the Ravagers have awoken. Look, it's not that bad. I, uh, okay, Dora just bad. takes off. All right. Mud's going to be right behind you. Okay. So you guys are running off in that direction. Um, Yamato, um, what are you going to be up? What are you up to? Um, I'm going to start uh, looking into the tech, see, see, well, look into the tech and see what the situation is tech-wise. Basically, access the systems and such. Okay, that will do that in a second. Um, Master Chief will, of course, jump off with them. Um, Galen is busy healing. And Sullivan Barnett, what are you up to? Uh, well, let's see. So, just to be clear, is anyone still talking to the scientist at this point? Uh, or did we all just... Apparent, the scientist was attempting to speak, and then everyone just started doing their own thing, so... Okay, okay well, being left on my own for a moment, I might... ...peril of accidentally prodding the wrong Borg uh, MacGuffin. I'm going to step over and... Do, face my perhaps most difficult task interacting with people. Ah, uh, committing uh, diplomacy. Okay, uh, hi. Uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett. I'm Chief Science Officer of... You know, it, this would take too long to explain. Point is, uh, we're, we are here to help. Um, as you can see, we're helping your uh, colleague here. Would you care to give me of what happened because this is a pretty bad situation she looks at... ah a scientist good someone smart and level-headed finally i'm zempt i was still am the chief's um ex the chief uh no oh, the specialist in ravager technologies and as i up until roughly oh 32 minutes ago i was in charge of this base uh, long story, long story short, apparently there has been a subculture of religious dogma running through our culture that's that we had thought long stamped out that worshipped these damned things. Turns out a, a good amount of them were assigned to this base, whether intentionally or not, I don't know. Or maybe they decided to restart their worship upon finding the stuff down there. I don't know. All that I know is that some of the stuff down there is pretty freaking cool. But <laughs> uh, it's gone. Oh, so... you're, you're not wrong, but just please keep going. <laughs> right. So everything was going well until about, oh, three or four days ago when the warp ship began its highly publicized travels and launch and all that stuff. Didn't really care about it myself. Far more interesting things underground. The, <clears throat> without my knowledge, some of the, some of our, my staff decided that the time for silent worship was over and a more active approach needed to take place, such as replacing their uh, self-experimentation with some of the cybernetic attachments. Oh, boy. Oh. Now, uh, I know, I know there were these micro-machines, these nanoscopic machines that appeared to be controlling everything, and everything oh. seemed to need a lot of power, so thankfully they were just literally dead weight. It was quite humorous to watch Carson limp around with that heavy-ass leg after he decided to cut it off, but 
now they've found warheads, and two of them began dreaming about some sort of whole, holy mission to bring the Ravagers back to cleanse this system of non-belief. I don't know. Religion is weird, okay? You don't have to tell me twice. I wasn't a sociologist. Uh, I, I did... It, frankly, um... Or nicer, more peaceful times. Uh, sure, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I did more archaeology, so I kind of dug up some of the remnants of, uh, of times when faith or and or civilization otherwise went astray. So, Splendid. yeah. I, let's compare notes. That said, this is. Let's compare notes once we get out of this alive. Agreed. Right. Agreed. Yeah, first, first, first we need to get out of here alive, oh. uh, and and, uh, and uh, shall let Larsay will interject. Uh, Lieutenant Lieutenant Larsay Yamato, I'm the main engineer of our group. Hello. Oh. Uh, yes, you can interface. What we've been able to ascertain about the Ravager technology is all contained within these library banks over here. I'm assuming that because you travel through the stars, our systems are probably fairly primitive. So, at this moment, just do what you think needs best. I wasn't going to say anything about that. Um, but more, I think, more to the point, um, you said the, the, uh, you said most of these systems didn't have power. Um, do you know if they had some sort of independent power source? Are they tied into the main station's feed? Would you be aware of that at all? Uh, based, on our bi based on our biologists' uh, understanding of their bodies, the ravagers individuals their power cells were contained within their bodies and they had to recharge after a period of independent motion how that was attained is theorized but we've never been able to put it into practice i suspect that carson and his cronies decided just to rig up some some fuel cells from the solar power gener from the generators and have begun powering technology that way and I don't suppose there's any sort of centralized hub that you can cut those out of or anything of the sort. It it's, might make... Uh, indep they've got... If it's an independent power backpack... Uh, sorry, Lieutenant, was it? Yes. Yes. Cool. Um, then, no, we don't have any means of remote, remote shutdown of uh, rem independent power supplies. Um, well... Remind me later, we need to talk about shutting off that beacon you have going down there, but for now, I'll suffice with uh, disar uh, with finding a way to disarm them. Um, oh, but... that what attracted you here? I was curious about that. Anyways, let's compare notes once we live. Yes. Uh, at this point, uh, Galen, you have finished patching up her partner's wounded shoulder, and he quickly, indi quickly indicates that it is functioning within normal parameters he seems oddly right. cold for a uh he almost reminds you of a vulcan if it weren't for the mm. purple pointed head my scans show anything abnormal like you know little cybernetics in his body uh that would be a reason plus medicine please uh difficulty of one actually no let's say difficulty right. of two I'm going to sp and I'm going to spend some threat to increase the th the uh, difficulty range 18 to 20 or complication range. I I got uh, biology, anatomy, cybernetics. Either or or all, yes. Excellent. I get three dice. <laughs> and while he's rolling that, um, oh, oh, okay. Boy. So that's one point of momentum. Uh, let's just see if any. Yeah, rolled well. I'm like, I'm like the Chuck Norris of holograms for doctors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you do not detect any Borg remnants or technology inside the either of their bodies. Yeah. Um, Dr. Uh, Galen to the Lynette. This is Crawford. Go ahead. Please establish a quarantine field around one of the cargo bays. We will use it as a triage center. Have the nurses establish uh, proper quarantine orders with Borg. Of course, and he'll relay that order to 
whatever uh, random yeah. yeoman or ensign is on the bridge. Yep. Yep. Um, the it is passed down the chain to uh, Thick Bay, where one of the um, support acting or support character nurses begins implementing the doctor's orders. And uh, Lieutenant... when it's appropriate, I'll have the uh, two uh, doctors get beamed aboard. All right. Um, both both figures go. Uh, they show a bit of shock as they materialize into nothingness. Oh, I should have mentioned that to them. Uh, Dr. Galen to Crawford? Yes, Doctor. Just to be on the safe side, I'd recommend stationing heavy guards throughout the deck for our guests in the uh, triage bay. Already on it. And he'll just give a little smile to Ember, or in her direction of where she ran to. Like, eh, that should keep her happy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ensign, or sorry, Lieutenant Yamato, you are at the uh, engineering station. If I can ask you for mm -hmm. a uh, either reason or... Uh, yeah, let's do reason and engineering with a difficulty of two to understand precisely what the heck is going on here. Okay. And uh, would my computer's focus apply? I would say so, yes. I'll spend a momentum for another dime. Okay, that is mm. the two successes you need. Okay. Okay, so what you understand is there has, um, uh, there is no power source within the Borg ship itself. It appears that um, portable generators were brought into certain systems. Uh, these systems hooked up to the computers, and then each system was just powered up to connect to the central mainframe, so that each so that sections of the queue of the scout ship could be investigated it without bringing the whole thing online um, you estimate that there is no way that a station of this size and this power could power the entire Borg scout ship anyways even if even if it was running at full capacity <clears throat> um, what is uh, all the chaos that is happening right now is not controlled by any computer systems or Borg algorithms. In fact, the only thing that the that this system is currently tied to appears to be a uh, reg, re, uh, yeah, a, reg, a series of systems that you recognize to be uh, Borg regeneration protocols and alcoves. Okay, well. They, they, the people who did the regenerate, did the bark stuff. They tied the regeneration systems into here, but uh, they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything else with these systems. Well, either they're trying, uh, either they're trying to find some way to commune with their, uh, with their Borg deities, or maybe I wonder. Yamato, do you think they could have used that to uh, supply power to the warheads? It's been the pact, perhaps. It, that might have just been a pact. I, I, I'm not seeing power to. I, I'm not seeing any other thing, signs that they tampered with other things on the ship. And the power generators on this facility could wouldn't be able to power the whole ship anyway. Well, yeah, obviously. And these people probably barely split the atom in the past century, and let alone, uh, well, they obviously just broke the warp barrier, but uh, neither here nor there. Uh, yeah. That splitting hair is not atoms. Yeah. <laughs> Point is, uh, Marcus thinks them a very quaint species. Quaint speaking. Okay. So while all this is going on in central operations, we are going to run down to the security folks who are going to... Uh, you run down a long series of 
uh, scaffolding style uh, metal stairways and causeways leading into the uh, pit that was created when this uh, scout ship crashed into the moon at relatively uh, fast speed. Uh, it goes down about a hundred, um, about a hundred meters or so, in a sort of a diagonally, more of a more of a scar, I guess, than a pit. Um, and you can see the, uh, you can see the noticeable green bolts of um, concentrated polaron energy emitting from individ from dark individuals in the far corner and then uh, in answer there are purple energy beams coming from some Iban that have taken up cover by a couple by a, some makeshift uh, crates and this is going to be scary but these are not actually you know full Borg but they are Borg just as you just as you get down uh, one of them scores a direct hit and one of the for lack of a better term cultists falls in a series of sparks and blood so we'll just move you guys over here So, since you said these weren't exactly full Borg, but still Borg, are they like some of the uh, Iban that have like yeah. attached parts they're, to themselves? They or? are Iban who have attached Borg components to themselves. So their skin isn't white. Their skin is still various shades of pinks and purples. Are they fully controlled by the uh, Nanites, though? Uh, no, they seem to be. They're active. They're acting independently of one another. In means that doesn't look like they're being controlled by a hive mind. Um, the fact that some of them are, or that one of them is shouting death to those who took the ravagers away from us, kind of indicates that they might not be in that they might be in full possession of their of what little sanity they may have left. Doral will kind of turn to Master Chief Ember. Uh, permission to stun? She nods. Uh, Dora's gonna level her rifle and use a minor action to charge it for spread. Okay. And she's gonna fire. Alright. And on that note, I'm just going to quickly uh, start roll into initiative here real quick. This shouldn't take too long, but at the same time, we should all have practice with combat. So, two here. Show nameplate. Three here. Okay, so um, that would be, I believe, a control plus security test with yep. a difficulty of two. With, yeah, with difficulty two. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. See, control security to does have a focus. Okay, and I have named. The... Ooh, okay, so that's three successes. Ooh, that's yep. So one momentum gained. And then, how many challenge dice is a phaser so, rifle? It's four plus four your plus... security. Okay, so that's eight challenge dice. Nice. Oh there yeah. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Um, I just need to get these guys added there. Uh, Captain Crawford, you're not on the turn order anymore. Neither is Dolrum. And then you guys get added a turn. Okay. So that was Dura that fired, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay, so that's dealing eight stress to which individual? One, two, three, or four? Well, I charged it for spread. Uh, I'm okay. not exactly sure how spread works. Oh, good question. I think that might actually be area that applies for a uh, 
phaser. Um, or rather for a type 3 phaser. Um, Whichever one um, it is, that will let me hit multiple targets. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay, so... Quality, yeah, charge, uh, area, intense, piercing, two, or vicious one. So, yeah, that's... Uh, area would uh, be the effect that he gets, and... Um, area, object... the attack uh, affects a wider area, area and can affect several targets at once. The attack automatically affects any character or damageable object within reach of the initial target and then one additional target within close range. Okay, given how clustered these are, I will say that affects three targets. Alrighty. So I, for, ease of, for ease of targeting, I shall say one, two, and three. So basically they're all effectively stunned? Uh, let's see, eight damage. They have one resist due to their self-surgeries, but yeah, so one, two, and three are out. Thankfully, if, if you were fighting actual Borg drones, they would they get to ignore the stun, but mm -hmm. these are not Borg drones. So, yeah. And uh, Dora's, Dora's not done. <laughs> oh, oh, good. Okay. Um, I would like Please to keep the initiative. <laughs> I would like to spend a momentum to take another minor action to aim. Okay. And then I'm going to spend two momentum for a swift task to fire at the last one. Okay. And she has yeah. the fire at will talent, so I ignore increased difficulty. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Um, let's for sake of this, I'm going to uh no, I don't think I need to spend a momentum for third die. Uh oh. Okay. Oh no. Oh. Is there a complication? Oh. I'm assuming. There yes. is a complication. Yes. Oh boy. Okay. So first, roll your challenge dice. Uh, actually, that's oh. that's a miss. So. Yeah, that's a miss. So it doesn't matter. Okay. So, actually, roll your challenge dice anyways, please. Oh boy. Now, um, quit. Uh, one question before yeah. we do anything. Oh, God almighty. Okay. Uh, <laughs> since, hey, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, aim minor action, was that right? Oh, that's right. So I can re-roll one of those. Yeah, I can re-roll that complication. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, the phaser rifle has the, uh, the phaser rifle has the accurate quality. So the, if the character performs an aim minor action before making an attack, then any number of d20s can be re-rolled. Well, so I'll just, just re-roll that complication. Not only your butt, but the entire moons. So, yeah. Oh, that's a critical. Oh, that's so. a crit, too. How did you manage to do that? <laughs> that's... Okay. okay, so that's... It's that's uh, fighting. It went from a 20 to a 1. That's amazing. Okay, so you get one point of momentum from that. And yeah. the other drone just... The well, the other cultist looks at what happened to his compatriots, uh, begins to shout something about interlopers and square in the chest, pretty much, and falls flat. Um, so it's that, fighting like that a was Kelpian. combat. That was combat. Mai <laughs> <laughs> just looks and goes, "Yeah, could have left one." Yeah, and Ember, I'll just Ember just Duro's looks just going to radio up to Galen. We have four stunned individuals down here whenever you get the time. On my way. Um, actually, there's now that you've had a chance to overlook the field, there's actually a grand total of four stunned, uh, two wounded cultists, and two potent and two unconscious and uh, bleeding out um, e uh, Eban scientists. They were the ones that were firing back and were conveniently knocked out of the fight as you guys entered. But they did take two others with them, so fair trade? Uh, yeah, and I'll update Galen about the injured and possibly dying. 
he will get down there quickly. <laughs> Turn on extra long legs. <laughs> <laughs> Why have two legs when you can have four? That's a like <laughs> that. That's a question. So if Galen just decides to jump, does he get <laughs> does he get injured? I probably would have to require like a momentum spend or something just to make sure. What's that... the What's the <laughs> velocity of the armband? That like, um, I'm a, so assuming that Galen decides not to make himself imma, immaterial, or just lighten himself. Yeah. Like yeah. he's as heavy as the armband can power, but if he lightens himself and literally makes himself as light as the armband, mm-hmm. that um, requires a lot of math. That is right now above my pay grade. So we'll just let's just give you a momentum and say he does that. Yeah, just because that Ooh. gets him down quick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's just going to be great. He just, like, walks off. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, wait, no! <laughs> like, oh, right, a hologram. <laughs> okay. And he doesn't Gal- do the superhero on He just lands on his feet. He just walks, continues walking forward. All right, Galen, I will re- request um, insight, uh, two insight medicine tests. One will be at difficulty one due to, with the regular Iban, one will be at difficulty two with the Aban, or the Aban cultists. All right. To see um, their current states. Multitude of focuses, I said before, still apply? I, yes, they would. Okay. Well, okay, <laughs> that's there's... The first uh, one. That's three momentum from the first one. Insight medicine for the next one. And you know what? I'm going to be cheeky and spend two of those momentum to get the extra fourth dice. Okay. And there, Jesus. we're so at, we're capped. Let's see, that was a difficulty two. Oh, so five, we're at five. For momentum. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm so, a doctor, guys. You are a doctor indeed. So you, so sad to say that the two Abani are, the regular Abani are sadly dead. Um, oh. Disruptors do not. Or Borg Polaron weapons do not leave a uh, do not have a stun effect. I'm afraid. Uh, the cult, uh, the two, the cultists that were felled by the Abani are bleeding out. Um, as the Abani have apparently not yet me- figured out how to add stun to their energy weapons either. Um, and but the four that you have stunned. Or that Dura stunned, I should say. The other two just watched and clapped. Um, they are in stable condition um, and more or less fine, given the fact that some have dis- rather gruesome disfigurations. Uh, yeah, I'll immediately work on saving the ones that are bleeding. Okay. Uh, that would be a Daring Medicine. Difficulty of two, please. Medicine. Once again, you would have your biology and cybernetics. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, that's um, nice. It's been a while. What was quick study again? Uh, quick study allows you to ignore difficulty from unfamiliar things. Okay. Um, which I have already taken into account. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just do the three for now and see what happens. Well, that's enough. They are... It's a bit um, quick and dirty, but they are stabilized. They're still heavily unconscious, um, given the fact that their their systems were already weakened by their self-modifications, and the firefight had not helped. They're unconscious. Um, uh, I want to give them an immune booster, and at the same time also give them a heavy sedative, uh, to keep um, brain patterns bare minimum, like enough not to like you know make them brain dead, mm-hmm. but to keep them in a coma. Understandable. Okay. I want to do that for all of them. <laughs> and because you prepared ahead of time, you certainly have enough equipment for it. So they are healed or st- stable and unconscious. And then yeah, beam them up to the ship with explicit instructions on how to disable. 
and remove the major components that are more obvious. Any of the major ones that are inside will be left to me. Deal with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very well. Um, anything else you guys wish to do at this... Oh yeah, there should be something about the uh, active warheads that should be looked at. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Larsa will probably look into uh, disarming them. Okay. Uh, and uh, she'll probably... I, uh, but uh, as she goes to do that, she'll probably say, Okay, um, just in case something goes wrong, everybody else back to the ship. I'm going to do a little, com a little self composure check here since I got a d20. Oh. Mm. But, uh, I might regret this. Then again, I might not if I get vaporized. But I should probably, st uh, I should probably stick around here, uh, L Lieutenant, just to give you the assist. Borg tech can be a tad unpredictable, and I'd rather not chance it. Right. Uh, Galen is gonna. He's uh. He's gonna. Is have you? Did you say this over the com badge? Yeah. I will notify next of kin if you don't make it. Good luck. <laughs> right. Comforting. Right. Just be be <laughs> careful. Be careful if that happens. My father could be very, very uh, overprotective. Okay, so Galen's beaming back. Uh, what? Who else is beaming back to the ship? Um, who all is going to be working on disarming the warheads? So this yeah. will be an extended I... task. Um, so anything like weapons or explosives or Borg tech would be of use here. Uh, yeah. Tactical systems, maybe? I'd allow that. Okay. Matt's going to go back to the ship because if anything goes wrong, he's the only hope for the ship. That is logical. Uh, let's see. Going back over mine, I know I've got talents that might be semi-relevant to this. Um, focuses. Um, <laughs> dead. Um, however, um, I don't know, scan, or maybe scan the warheads or whatnot. In any case, I think uh, I'm going to tap my communicator real quick just to hail the lunette. Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett to uh, to the lunette. Oh, uh, this is Crawford. Go ahead. Sir, we uh, believe that the security team has incapacitated the. Uh, right, they've incapacitated the. Um, Hostiles. It's honestly kind of freaky to explain, sir. And I, uh, yeah, exactly what I was thinking going in. Point is, we have the situation mostly under control. Uh, Lieutenant Yamato is going to attempt to disarm the warheads. Um, my best suggestion would be that we keep non-essential personnel and the ship at a distance, um, being a little prickly at times. Of course, um, all right, uh, trying to figure out, and you said what would be the initial task for this out of character? Uh, so this would be, um, this would either be an insight plus security, uh, mm -hmm. ins so it'd either be a, uh, there would be either insight or control and insight or, and security or engineering. Basically, whichever ones you want. Right. Okay. So, insight, insight, and con insider control, security, or engineering. Uh, Doro's going to beam off too. Okay. Ember is going to stay down just because it would look bad if she left any of her superior officers to die. Okay. Well, I'll do control engineering. And for focus, um. I've, uh, I've got computers. I don't know if experimental technology would work with this because it is Borg, mm -hmm. I, and it's not technically experimental. Uh, what? Let's look at your focuses here. 
because I want you Com to live. I really do. But yeah, you know, computers, if... computers, warp core mechanics, experimental technology, starship recognition, starship power systems, and extravehicular operations. Yeah, I think experimental technology would work well enough. <clears throat> and all right, Sullivan, and you're assisting Sullivan. Um. Presuming I'm assisting, it would have to be with the same task as uh, Yamato. Would that be correct? Um, I believe that's the case, but at the same time, I've nef story wise, I just from Star Trek, I don't see that being a thing. So if you wish to assist using a different set of roles, I'm okay with it. Just as long as you. Okay. Can. Yeah. So. Well, I don't necessarily have any particular focus that would be good here, um, unless I can get away with saying that um, Barnett would be, in order to, in order to best help, he would be conducting tricorder scans of the warhead, trying to better understand the um, arming and processing sequence that it uses, uh, making sure that there aren't any sort of bizarre buildups. In that case. Um, I'll let that work once. All right. Would sensor operations apply at that point or maybe yeah. a further stretch of research? Okay. Yeah. In that case... Yeah. And I believe Yamato still has her determination, which might be useful at some point. So, yeah. yeah. And a lot of momentum, and, uh, so let's see what happens. Yeah. Happens. Yeah, I'm going to spend... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to spend one of that for a third dice. This is an extended task, so it's probably better to spread out the momentum use instead of burning it all. Probably. Yeah. Um, so, would with what I gave you, would um, would science be an okay discipline for the one roll at I'll, the very least? I'll allow it. Go control. My stats are pretty good there. Okay, that is the three successes already needed. That's a good start. All right. You go, Larce. And that's one more momentum back. Cool. So, okay. Uh, so, Larce, if you could roll the um, number of challenge dice equal to two plus your engineering stat. So, seven, please. That's slash R... No. Uh, uh, there, oh, there's the, the uh, challenge dice macro. If you um, on roll twenty, if you go to the second uh, tab to the far right, uh, there should you should see a macro there called challenge dice. Okay, yeah, I yeah. see it. Yeah, so if you uh, click the checkbox in bar, then it'll show up just down and below the player names, and then you can just click the button. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay, so that is four successes. Um, Wait, yeah. is that um, extended, ta S extended tasks two plus? Yeah, so two yeah, that's plus... Route. Yeah, so okay. yeah, I miscounted, sorry. Yeah, so, um, can... Okay, uh... Yeah. Probably one momentum for piercing and another to reroll those three zeros. Oh, uh, I think I, that's smart. Yeah. yeah, I believe that's a good idea. Because piercing will get rid of two, two of the three resistance. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so that's a grand total of seven against one resistance. So you get six on the work track, which I believe is enough for one breakthrough. That okay. it is. Okay. So that um, now, if I remember correctly, we're now at work track 10. Uh, breakthrough reduces the difficulty by one. And uh, also reduces the magnitude by one, correct? Uh, yeah, hold on. Yeah. I'm yes. working on typing up stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so, oh, never mind. You got it. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so um, you are able to determine the that the power source to the torpedoes is... Not the internal power system, thank whichever god you choose to thank. And it's, <laughs> yeah. it's an ex 
as an external force, um, prob probably due to the fact that it's hooked up to the re aforementioned regeneration alcoves. Yeah. Uh, um, you're, oh, able to, yeah. you're able to interface with them and begin to get a better understanding of how this whole thing has been kitbashed together. So yeah. another series of, cha of rolls, please. I should mention that this is a timed test, so you have another three rolls to do. Okay. <laughs> to do what you do. Yeah, because that that bomb is starting to charge. Spend another momentum for a third die. All right. Okay. I can go back to assisting. Um, at this point, would you want me to just shift over to control engineering or drop the focus up or being applied? Mm. What were your focuses again? Uh, the one I was applying to this was sensor operations. Yeah. I do have a research focus, but I figure that's probably not, not exactly here. Yeah, so you probably will drop the focus no matter which way you roll. So, yeah. Okay. Would I still get the science discipline, at least, to help? I'll or would you prefer engineering? I'll, I'll be kind. You can take, take it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. well. Uh-oh. Okay. So, so that is the, um, that's the two successes you need. So Okay. Yeah, it is difficulty two, so you do make it. All right. Uh, uh, so um, because you've had one breakthrough, I believe you now get to roll eight challenge dice. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that is... Uh, minus... Yeah. Uh, so six minus... I'll... Sp I'll spend a momentum for another piercing, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that gets us a breakthrough. That does. So. Okay. So now we are work track of... Let's see. So that's work track so we of have five left. Four left? Uh, Wait, five, cause... because of resistance. Or oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, difficulty now of one. Magnitude of one. Resistance doesn't decrease with each success, does it? Hmm. Doesn't, as far as yeah, I'm aware. I don't believe no, it does. yeah, resist resistance doesn't change, but the work track and the difficulty changes. Makes sense. Okay. Oh, magnitude may have stayed three because ah, whatever. Anyways, okay. So, holy cow, you have no idea how these uh, scientists haven't blown up half the moon already with their experimentations on these things. Um, if this was just a factory fresh torpedo, you probably would have had this thing licked by now. But these um, cultists have done so many. Um, internal modifications to the device, you're lucky that the moon and planet are still here. Uh, 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 doing fine, Larce. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm alright, but damn, these these commies damn cut this they, they screwed the, I, I can't believe they managed to get this thing I, I, I can't believe how many safeties they had to override just to get this thing working! Uh, and at this point, Ember chooses to say, you know, I'm I'm fine with dying in the line of duty. It's kind of what I expected when I signed up for this position, but I'd rather it not be today. No pressure. Uh, agreed. Ugh. Um. So, um, another th another series of rolls, please, and I'm going to dump some threat to increase the threat range, uh, or the complication range to 16 to 20. Okay. Oh, this is not going to go well. Well, have you spent determination yet, Yamato? Uh, no, but I, I, now I suppose... Now might I... be a very good time. Because you yeah. get an automatic crit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. Oh. I, I'm go I'll, uh, use, I'll use the value, every problem has a solution. That sounds like a good, um, good value to, ta to tag here. Yeah, every problem has a solution. I will find the solution to this one. Okay, so that's an insta twenty. So mm -hmm. I, 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 an insta one. So that's two. I won't worry about uh, any other 
I won't worry about buying more dye. Well, the cost to buy dye is doubled when you do your yeah. Uh, yeah. Expensive. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to afford another a fourth dice anyways. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless you want to give me threat, because I've just spent most of mine. Don't or... do it. <laughs> I, I won't worry about that. So just two d twenty. And I'll roll for and these. My, my focus still applies. I have the assist ready. Okay. There's so three. That's three. So you get two momentum from that. And a There's fourth. Four. Uh, let's see. So that is nope. That's only an eleven. So that's not complication range. Oof. Yeah, nope, you are all okay, much to my disappointment. Okay, roll, <laughs> uh, roll me nine challenge dice there, please, Larce. Okay. Uh -huh. Ooh, okay, hmm. um, Here's well... Here's a hint, spend a momentum. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just spend it. Spend, yeah, the, spend momentum the momentum for, pe for piercing. Mm -hmm. And we're done. Yeah. So at the um, very last minute, the two devices start wh a shrill whine in, um, in harmony as both devices immediately start to enter their final countdown. Um, Larsay, how do you wish to finally put the pair of torpedoes to rest? I... Uh... I, I'm furiously typing at controls, trying to disarm them, and finally I decide, oh, screw it! Uh, try to do percussive maintenance! Uh, and I activate the Omni Blade and just uh, I flash through uh, the main cables that lead to the detonators. All right. Uh, the high pitched squeal just is immediately replaced with an odd sense of tinnitus as your ears ring with absolute silence. <sighs> well, apparently there is now an emote fest going on in my channel, but at least, you know, <laughs> hi folks. Anyways, sorry. <clears throat> Well, uh, <sighs> cut. Lars <laughs> uh, uh, will take a look, will look at the uh, blade on her exo tricorder and <laughs> sigh in relief and, whew, well, that worked as, that works as intended. Uh, I, I've used it a couple of times, but never in a situation like that. Uh, and then the, she'll turn off the blade. Uh, Ember to the lunette. This is Crawford. Well, we're still breathing down here, Captain. Um, yeah, the torpedoes are no longer a threat to anyone, I hope. Um, please beam us back. We're ready to leave. Right away. Okay, and because I still have B-plot to move forward with, um, I'm sorry to do this to... Th I'm, I'm sure that there was a couple scenes that people would have liked to have done, but so that we wrap up at a decent time, I'd like to bring this plot to a close with the promise, with the uh, well done and congratulations given to you guys from the various uh, politicians as you transfer their wounded and cultists to a jail slash hospital. As you guys begin to head back to the station, word finally reaches you about what the hell's been going on on the station. And on that note, we are going to cut back to the station. So, as much as I would have liked to have done some last-minute role-playing there, time we are in the final hour, and time is of the essence. Because I do want to have my players conscious. I really do. 
Um, okay, so uh, let's look at Dalrum. You were going to be in Ops, correct? Correct. I was heading to Ops after the Arboretum. Okay. So we are moving you to the Ops as soon as I see it. There it is. All right. You have entered the Ops. Um, Lieutenant Durval and Ensign Lac Ila both stand at attention as you enter. And then resume their posts. Report, what do you got? Uh, situation unchanged, Commander. Both Klingons and Romulans have detached f themselves from the docking bay umbilical cords and have their shields and weapons armed, however neither of which seem to wish to make the opening move. We have received 32 requests from the Limitless Latinum for docking or for um, clearance. I have denied each and every one of them. Thank you. So, business as usual this day. Seemingly, sir. Uh, any report from sickbay on how the Klingons are doing? The Klingons have... Uh, the Klingons appear to have made a full recovery and have been... Uh, there are two conflicting reports. Um, one filed by Katok, who says that he has discharged the patients. One from the head nurse, Asia, saying that the patients walked out. Klingons in their honor always defend each other. Tend Indeed. to um, go with our Delton nurse. Oh, goodness. Okay. Uh, let's hail these two, see if we can get them calmed down. All right. Uh, you wish to hail the Klingons? Or the... Oh, you wish to hail the two ships? Yeah, let's just hail them both at the same time. Let's just make this even worse. Yes, Commander. I am... Ah, so a Romulan and a Romulan commander and a Klingon captain appear on the uh, holographic display. What is it you wish, Federation? You continue to harbor these treacherous Romulan patoks. Once again, I... we once again, you stupid, ignorant individual. You're thick Lady, shut it. I say, <clears throat> Commander. So, due to the events that are occurring and what we are starting to learn, my thought right now is the attempt on the Klingons was not from the Romulans there, Klingons, and I believe the Romulans are just as much of a target. Explain. Well, a couple of hours ago, my husband was attacked in the Arboretum. Meaning, we're all currently in the line of fire. My, I'm assuming the Klingons were attacked first. Somebody connected to me, as I'm in charge of the station right now, was attacked. I'm assuming the Romulans, the Romulan party here, will be next. Your supposition is not beyond the realm of impossible. For all we know, it's on your ships. We've been running scans, but uh, we've noticed that we are we have gaps in our logs. Um, the scanners are going dark for 30 minutes or are on repeat. We're still looking into that. I have my team down reviewing it within the core, trying to figure out what is wrong with our internal systems. But the fact of the matter is our systems went down just before the attack on the Klingon embassy and they were down when my husband was attacked in the Arboretum. So there's Federation trickery. Honestly, I have no idea. Uh, I'm not aware of anything and considering someone connected to me was attacked, obviously I'm not in the loop. So speaking of being in the loop, it's around this time that um, Naya and um, I'm sorry, I've already forgotten his name. Uh, Zin? Uh, Dan? Uh, well, if I remember correctly, uh, what were they going uh, to do? Uh, Naya would stay with uh, Mayloon oh, in order right. to try to sort out things. So Rafati, um, unless Jensen wanted to come along um, 
Zahn might have reported on his own up to uh, Ops in order to fill in Dolrum, because contrary to what Jensen was suggesting, uh, has some sense of protocol, basically. Very well. So at this point, one of the turbo lift doors opens, and Zahn exits the turbo lift. Speaking of, uh, still talking to the Klingons, the Romulans. Speaking of an uh, update, one of my officers just came back with an update. I will relay the message to you as soon as I figure out what it is. But in the meantime, can we please power down the weapons while you're inside the dome? Very. Oh, very well. As a show of good faith, and to show that we are not the hostility, the hostile party here, the Ro- the Romulans. Sh- will accede to you, sorry will accede to your request and on that note the uh, Romulan uh, ship powers down its weapons the Klingons attempt to give you the stare down only to realize they cannot stare down a, a Zindi reptilian and eventually they just cut their comms and their ship powers down their weapons Lieutenant Arval keep an eye on them if they decide they're gonna uh, raise their weapons again of course Ken. Ensign what do you have for me? Uh, before speaking here, just to clarify, is this, um, are we quickly approaching the uh, next interval where time would be blacked out, or did Correct. The we have t- some sense of time? The next time blackout is uh, 1300 and is roughly an hour and a half from now. Okay, and- so in that case, um, Rafati still has his combat, John, at this point. Uh, Commander Dolrum, may I have a moment with you in private, please? Indeed, right this way. I'll motion him into the uh, captain's ready room. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'll prepare the set. You guys can start talking. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, good. Reporting. Replicator. Yes. Uh, just one moment. Walks over to the replicator. Uh, one glass of water. Room temperature, please. And it pops out. Okay. Just going to take it, start taking like handfuls, and just basically spraying around the room. Okay. Ensign. Sorry, sir. I had to be careful. Um, you do know com- this uh, ready room's on a separate system from the entire station, and we can put it into silent mode. Quite right. That may be wise, sir. Computer, activate silent mode and uh, put up a dampening field. Acknowledged. Amanda, do you know anything about an Agent Rush? The name doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard. Well, then that's a problem. A people, but not off the top of my head. That's a problem. Yes, and it's a problem for all of us then because, uh, well a series of blackouts and uh, it appears that there's a relatively active um, I don't know whether it's being forged or not precisely but seems to have a link with that it appears to be a Starfleet intelligence code Um, but there are uh, multiple blackouts that have been coincided there's an ongoing one presently for the dignitary quarters I've had specialists Melun and Naya start working on it and there is set to be another one, um, I believe, at 1,300 hours around the Romulan Dignitaries' quarters, if I recall properly. Uh, ro- uh, yes. Or am uh, I remembering? Nope, you are rem- remembering correct. So there's a current, there's currently a blackout underneath the Romulan Embassy, and there will be a blackout in the uh, Romulan quarters. Uh, well, suffice to say... The Romulans are currently on their ship, so that gives us a little bit of... Uh, nope, the, the Less... Romulan ambassadorial party are still on station. It's just the crew of their ship that's... Ah. Yeah, I, yes, sorry sir. if I wasn't uh, clear with that. And we'll have greater difficulty than you think, uh, he says, sh- uh, like shaking the glass of water a little bit. One of the earliest blackouts uh, permitted... Remove a couple of the... Um, a couple of our observation suits designed to cloak. Therefore, they would uh, they could be on the station relatively undetectable. Or undetectable. I'm hoping that if we can clear up the sensor glitches, we or rather the uh, sensor uh, problems with the computer, that we might be able to 
detect our own suits at work, you know, provided they haven't done too much modification, um, I might suggest we pull up one of the ensigns on the ship, or is that is that one well quaffed uh, rude man who spends all that time in the labs around? Is he still here? <laughs> the lieutenant. Um, uh, which lieutenant I don't believe. Probably <laughs> Sullivan Dor Barnett. <laughs> yes. Oh. Um, unfortunately, that specific lieutenant is not on board at the moment. Uh, that's a pity. Well, I, I'm sure that we have someone else around here that's good with the sensors. Uh, in any case, um, they may well be op- uh, these operatives may well be working around the station with impunity. Uh, Mr. Jensen and I have some interesting ideas as far as how to intercept them the details of which fully certain of at this point but i whether i want to admit it or not i trust jensen at his job and he knows about how to infiltrate he knows how to figure out people i don't like to admit it but as a security officer before this he's a good person to have on our side I quite agree. He seems like a most duplicitous, interesting individual, and I should very much look forward to studying him more in the future. But priorities, Commander, obviously. I'll go along with Jensen. As much as I don't want to say it as the commander of this station, go along with Jensen because he'll be able to figure it out. In the meantime, I'm going to use a little old school communication. Uh, to get the Romulans out of there. Oh, very well, very well. Just bear in mind, they may uh, they may already be a couple steps ahead of our game. They could have uh, assassins planted in the uh, in the exits of the area. They could have a secondary shooter at the ready. We don't know precisely who's been compromised by what. I just haven't had time to follow the threads. That said, I did meet our uh, I did meet a citation, which was quite interesting. Uh, sorry. Time is of the essence. I should depart. Get back to work. Try to figure it out. I'm going to figure out what we can do and try to get uh, our friends to safety so we don't start a war. Which could be what they want. Indeed. Indeed. And that's part of the reason I trust Jensen in this case. I trust Jensen too. Well, Commander... Says with a little two finger salute. Ensign, we have a job to do. Let's do it. Computer and silent running. <laughs> Just going to leave the glass of water on like a, an end table and move on out. All right. I'm going to replicate two walkie talkies. <laughs> oh, old school. And then. Site to site, or three walkie talkies, and site to site transport them to the ships right in front of the captain. Okay, um, you do that, and just as soon as your site to site transport finishes, uh, there is the sound of a materialization right next to you. As this individual appears, right two steps away from you, he's wearing his typical bar jacket, his uh, he looks like he may have, may be on the way to the bar. He's just fully dressed up in his suit. Commander, I apologize. Computer, activate privacy mode. Uh, code name Rush Beta 3849. Commander, I do so. I had so hoped to maintain this a little, uh, this facade a little longer, but circumstances needed that I out myself to the current commander of the station, which is you. Why? Why is it always the bartender? Why can it not be as someone like unsuspected? For what? Well, we we were going to attempt the tailor, sir, but the Obsidian Order used that trick several years ago. I am. Um, I'm still Mazzy Parrick, of course. Originally sent to keep an eye on my dear brother, but 
well, sibling rivalries and all that. But I am Agent Rush. And at roughly 600 hours this morning, I was assaulted and I was invasively attacked by a, a cloaked assailant. And judging from the injuries and the fact that I was unconscious for about five hours while I was unconscious, I suspect I was the victim of a mind meld. Well, that would make sense with the way that everything else is going around here. Yes. I just wanted to say, sir, that... Or Commander Dalrum, that this agent, whatever it is, is not acting within the purview of Starfleet Intelligence. Or myself, for the record. And if I had any means of catching him or her, or it, um, I would be at your disposal. Oh... Yes, that's right. The other thing they did was steal the incendium that Ember likes to have with her bloody blood crown drinks from from my uh, from the secure fridge in the bar. They stole your incendium. Yes, it's it isn't you know wep it isn't pure grade, but with enough of it and proper for finding techniques. Dolrum does like the Picard face palm. <laughs> <laughs> and just rubs his head. They stole high grade fertilizer from the. Uh, yes. As I have plate. been led to believe. <laughs> At this point, um, Peric does the Picard face palm. Only be, do, well, they, does it better because he's already bald and blue. <laughs> well, I don't have hair right, well, either. Well, that, that's true. You're both bald. So, yeah, that's how that works. They, well, they. And in the. While stealing fertilizer, they attacked my husband. Uh, you have my sincere condolences on the matter. Uh, he's medically induced coma, as last I heard, but expected to be all right. Um, oh, goodness gracious. Fill me in on the intelligence things. I realize, I realize I'm not intelligence, but considering everything that's happening, we need to know what's happening. Take a seat. I'll replicate us some bourbon. <laughs> Well, not much to tell, Captain. I was sent by Starfleet Intelligence to ensure that you were handling the Borg as, or the Borg technology as responsibly as possible, as well as keeping the various diplomats and ambassadors uh, in, in the loop as best as possible. I do have some concerns about that Jensen character, but we will have to deal with him if he proves ornery. However, for now, he seems to be, for lack of a better term, on our side. Or at least allied uh, with us. I agree with you. Uh, as much as I don't necessarily like to admit it, I semi-trust him. Mm. I don't, but that is what... That's why, I keep, that's why I serve him drinks personally. Fair. Do you have any idea why we have sensor blackouts? Yes. Uh, Starfleet Intelligence likes to operate in the dark, so to speak. So whenever a particular series of events need to happen off the record, certain codes can be impl implanted into the system, checked against specialized encrypted databases, and the sensors can basically record nothing for as long as necessary. So why was there a sensor blackout during the Klingon embassy, or before the Klingon em embassy, this morning outside of your quarters, and when my husband was attacked? Well, if I recall the timeline right, after I was attacked, I had the codes ripped out of me. Um, before then, that's a very good question, Captain. Um, I'm... I admit that I had the I admit that I was I had accessed one of the cloaked suits to ensure that the individuals were behaving themselves. I had only checked out one, but I've heard now two were missing and I've since returned mine. Too. But so 
covert espionage is one of my specialties. Uh, as for the explosion, I don't have a very good answer for you on that front. It's entirely possible that the GM just did not get the timing right on that. <laughs> 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 I was not expecting that. I'm every now and then I, you know, I try to. It's a who done it that tests my abilities as a GM. Every now and then I slip up a detail. I apologize, but yes, <laughs> that's still great. Yeah, that blow so, moment. Yeah. So let's just well. say that the initial assault happened 0600 two days ago, and everything that happened after that is the result of yeah okay sorry fun hey every now and then i make i plot i plot hole myself my bad let's move on from that no problem all right, all right mozzie since we're apparently working against intelligence we're gonna have to act like intelligence i have to somehow de-escalate the klingons and the Romulans, I've got them to at least power down their weapons for right now. I'm assuming because of the way that uh, this has been attacked. The Klingons were attacked. Now it seems like we were attacked. Um, and uh, I'm assuming the Romulans are the next to be attacked. As much as I hate to say this and seem less personal, to make this less or depersonalize the situation, Captain or Commander, your husband, I suspect, was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You're... See, the only co the civilian side of the station is not something that uh, Starfleet has act or Starfleet intelligence has access to. So they most likely waited, cloaked for your husband to open the fertilizer locking or the fertilizer storage bays and then did the deed. Uh, that would make sense. And because the codes are in Rami, they haven't been able to find. Uh, Rami hasn't been able to find anything, and our internal sensors keep up coming blank for both the uh, mineral and for the fertilizer. Correct. Um, at this point, Naya. Um, sorry. Um, at this point, Captain, if you don't mind, I'm going to have. Um, computer. Access uh, internal access internal Starfleet database recognition uh, algorithms. Deactivate current codes in place by uh, uh, put in place by uh, Agent Rush. Authorization Rush Delta six four nine eight burn. I believe, Captain, within the next couple minutes, your sensors should be online. And a little more fully functional. And if you don't mind, within that couple minutes, I'd like to quickly show myself out. Just know that I might need a call on you. Well, Captain, my, I'll be in the bar 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Unless it's, unless it's during the weekends. And with that, he taps a couple commands into a small Elkar's device on his wrist and materializes. Dematerializes. Dematerializes that too. I take the walkie-talkie and try to connect to, to the Klingons and the Romulans. Um, Jensen's going to be trying to crawl into, like, is there a Jeffrey's tree behind the Romulan embassy? Um, yes, there, because this is Starfleet, or Star Trek, there are Jeffrey's tubes all over the place. So, yes, there are several Jeffrey's tubes in between the levels. I'm going to be taking, like, a long way to get to that uh, room but like a but good for a one minute trek through the uh, Jeffrey's troop um, and I'm going to be in my full gear with my weapon okay yay I'll take threat for that cool <laughs> okay so what you um, because your stuff is not Starfleet issued um, it picks up the um, cordite oh. and oh sorry the fertilizer and and I do take Nia's combat. Uh, of course. <clears throat> um, so while Commander Dalrum is playing um, 
telephone with the Romulans and the Klingons. Um, we are going to quickly play a game of uh, Die Hard with Michael Jensen in the Jeffries tubes. Um, because your stuff is not uh, Starfleet and therefore immune to all this shenanigans, it picks up the uh, bags of fertilizer and the high, now high-grade incendium compounds located roughly below the Romulan embassy. There's also... Uh -huh. And about this time, the se about the time that you detect it, um, the station... Uh, station tactical consoles light up with de with uh, potential explosive detections or de explosive detection system warnings. And we go to the station automatically goes to red alert. Correct. I'm just gonna sigh heavily in my helmet. I was like, this is how they figure things out. Great. Um, yeah, I'm gonna make my way down to that. Okay. Uh, and I want to see if I can disarm it. Okay. Um, it's a far simpler device than what had to be deactivated before. So this will just be a single challenge. This will be a uh, control security, uh, difficulty of three. And the few threat you gave me for wearing all of your fancy armor and carrying your fancy weapons <laughs> is going to increase the complication range to 17 to 20. Uh, uh, since this is my second time activating Jensen, I'm going to give him a new focus. Okay. Uh, I'm going to act, uh, give him uh, explosives. That sounds like a good one. Okay. And what was the roll again, sorry? Uh, control security. Control security. Do, yep. I don't get a determination. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't get a determination until you pick a value. Okay. Do I have to check that. Uh, is it okay if I... Oof. I'm going to use one momentum to get a third dice. And what's the difficulty T said? Uh, seven, uh, difficulty of three, and the complication range is 17 to 20. I, as commanding officer, can give my determination at any point in time. Um... I'm going to... Well, since the alarms are blurring... Jensen to Dolorum. This is Dolorum. Found a package. We're just getting it. Our sensor. We got our sensor suite fully operational. And are just receiving it too. Are you close enough to disarm it? <laughs> I can taste it. Then do it. Yeah. So. That is me giving you my determination, and it does not need a value because it's me giving you yeah. mine. All right. And does that mean I can just use it for an extra crit? Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> So okay. that means you need to spend two momentum for that third die if That's you're still correct. doing it. Yeah, so we're down to one. We have a one to roll, re-roll, if necessary. Uh, how many momentum we need. Yes. If you have, like, ca cautious, I guess. Yeah, yeah if you have I cautious, the, you can't spend, you can only spend determination to re-roll test dice. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, here we go. Fingers crossed, this is where I lose all my magic. Oof. Oh. oh, boy. I mean, you had three. You got three because I gave you mine. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so... I have a 17 and an 18. Oh, yeah, shit. So that's two complications. Um, I think you can cancel out one of them with one to, with one momentum, but that still leaves one. It takes one. two. Oh, it takes two. Okay. Um, so... But he succeeded at the task because he did get three. Yeah. Uh, you succeed at the task. So it is. How about a smaller explosion? Like it's it's just contained to the Jeffrey tube. <laughs> oh, that's a okay. So you managed to uh, successfully de deactivate the primary detonator. However, the saboteur found these set up a second detonator that goes off just as you are breathing a sigh of relief. Uh, there is a muffled explosion. Um, thankfully, it's are comms open when that happens. That. That's up yeah, to, I left yeah. them open. Um, Jensen, uh, you hear Jensen is alive, um, but you're probably too proud to cry for pain, right? <laughs> oh, I missed the Klingon twins. Oh. Uh, needless to say, you suffer a major injury. 
I forget what term they use, but it's one that you need to be stabilized lethal. pretty damn quick. It's a lethal uh, in yeah. injury. Yeah, you take a lethal uh, injury. So I am crawling my ass out of that Jeffrey's tube <laughs> as quickly as I can. Jensen, are you okay? Respond. Uh, <laughs> Hold on. I, I, I'm going to need help. We'll sight to sight you. Hold on. Rami. Yes, yeah. yes, Commander. Emergency medical sight to sight transport. Get uh, Jensen to sick bay. Now, sick bay, medical emergency coming in. Understood. Sight to sight transport initiated. One split second, I'm about to lose my headset. I'm the worst enemy to my own characters. I almost got <laughs> Crowley killed by self assimilation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jensen, you are now in sick bay. Oop. Oop. Uh, I think or... your mic sensitivity uh, increased. Did it? Oh, wow. Okay. How's this? Better? A little bit better. Yeah. Sorry about that. I will. I think if I plug my microphone in, it buggers up the sensitivity. So I will keep that in mind and sort of speak slightly quieter. So hopefully this works. Uh, okay, so we are now in the infirmary where we can find ourselves a. Uh, where is he? Jensen. There's Jensen. Jensen is materi- straight onto one of the beds, and most of you people are no longer here. So I just want to toss up the traits here of the augment. Okay. Because I think that you can, you can use it however you want, but there you go. Okay, da 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 da. Okay. Good to know. Um, so I, if someone could please roll either the, uh, well, if someone could bring on a wall could talk and ensign a Shia. It would... I'll do a Shia. Okay. Um, this is going to be a daring I'll medicine test in to stabilize Jensen with a difficulty of two. Daring, daring medicine. medicine. Mm-hmm. Okay. If Jensen Let's... lands on the bio bed, he's looking at a trap and he just rips one piece out. I'm like, hate that. <laughs> Okay, uh, I've got what it. Is this, what's, what is what's the shit sh- oh, yeah, dare, during medicine? Because uh, Katak is shooting a 414. Um, I, I, Ashea has daring of 8 and medicine of 4. So why don't we let Katak take the point because he has a 10 for daring. And you assist. Okay. Uh, would Katak's diagnosis infectious diseases come into play? Uh, not really in this instance. If you had biology, uh, alien physio or exobiology... Has Katak been bumped I this session? He only think... has three focuses, no values, no talents. So if no one's bumped him, now might be a good time. Xenobiology! A must for every, cling- for every doctor. Okay. Yeah, and... Uh... Uh, Shea has uh, for Shea's role she has anesthesia, pharmacology and patient I would think patient care would work quite well for this you need to roll one success Yeah. oh boy I was about to say we have a momentum you do have a momentum but it's a ah. little late now to take that for an extra dice this is how Jensen dies <laughs> <laughs> No pressure. And no one has no one here has determination to be able to burn to use. Oh, hey! oh, oh! Yes! nice. So you get one Holy momentum crap. out of that. Nice. Oh. Beautiful. Okay. Well done. So J- Jensen just gets the appreciative smile of a lovely Delton female and a gruff nod from a Klingon as he slips into unconsciousness. But you're at least fine. Uh, Okay. So. Okay. So the Romulan consul... The Romulan consulate has been saved. Um, However, there is one last blackout that... Or at least one last planned blackout. What do you guys wish to do? Uh, refresh my memory because I I was under the impression it was the or the la- or 
So, I may have written down the timeline wrong. So there um, was, what the, was the, last the continuous blackout was h hiding the explosives underneath the Romulan consulate. Okay. And the blackout at one o'clock or thirteen hundred is at, in the Romulan quarters, which okay. has just about to start happening. I think that is the direction where uh, on Ensign Rafati would be heading. Um, since he realized he probably wouldn't make the uh, he wouldn't make the rendezvous with Jensen, but figured he's an industrious chap. Um, that being said, that's on... probably you can finish. Going... Yeah, yeah. Um, on the way, um, I think Rafati might ask Rami if there are any records of any um, any civilians or that might have come on board recently that have any notes about, or like anyone that they have in the database that is on Starbase uh, who are known practitioners of Susman. Uh, if I have to roll a task for that, that's... Um, at this stage in the game, I'm just going to give it to you. Uh, there are several, uh, there are two Vulcans who are proficient with Susman and are both on the security detail. However, both uh, have been on station for uh, since the official commencement date and their times have been uh, well established, let's say. Or, yes. Yeah, their their alibis have been confirmed. They they um, work in the, yeah. they work in my department. I I know the, where they'd be. Yeah. Um, right. I should also mention that now that the sensor glitches have been cleared up, um, you now have full sensor sweeps once again, which means that you can now detect the envir the cloaked environmental suits. Because okay. the environmental suits can only, only sort of protect themselves from, you know, pre, uh, pre warp tech or basic civilizations. So you know they can, anything above, uh, anything up to infrared they can block, but any other stuff like you can pick them up with ease. How else are they supposed to figure out where they are in the field? Fair enough. In that case, uh, as we near that blackout, I would love to take a tricorder and give a quick scan of the air, like take a very, try to hide myself, take a discreet scan if possible. Okay. Um, I'm just going to move us into a quarters because that is where we're about to be. Um, that's starting with a Q. Would First. you say if uh, would you say that uh, Hennes would be uh, briefed on the situation by uh, Dolrum and be heading towards the area to at least provide some backup? I suspect that would be a wise idea. And apparently the only quarters I have uploaded are the family quarters, which are not even the, do the properly done ones yet. That's a shame. Anyways, so we'll just use this set. You guys can all... Early installment weirdness. Yes, quite. Um, so, Henas is there, Petey is there, nope. ah, layers and lateness, not a good combination. Yep. So, sorry, I hope we're almost done, I apologize, this has, this story has gone way longer than I had originally anticipated. Okay, so you guys are out here, and inside are the Romulan folks. So, uh, feel free to do your test. That would be a reason science, or reason security with a difficulty of one. And a uh, Lieutenant Ibak can assist if she wishes. A reason security? Reason security. Where are they? They are down here. Investigation still comes in. That it would. Okay, I've only got three focuses, debate, law, and Starfleet pro fleet protocols. I doubt those would work. Nope, neither of those would, none of those would work, I'm afraid. But it doesn't matter because um, Rif Rif Rifati has got the one success already. So let's see if there's yes, any momentum. I, I found my tricorder. Yeah. That'd be zero. Okay. Okay, so what you do... Um, so despite... So standing guard... You are detecting a cloaked uh, signature of one of the suits. 
it's actually already inside the ambassadorial quarters where there are currently two life signs ambassador Hanesa and one of her guards Vrovine Roger well, Lieutenant, I don't suppose that uh, you have an override. Uh, you'd be able, uh, you'd be willing to override the door. I, uh, any door locks? I just don't want that on my record. Um, of course, I, I can. I I can do. I I can do that. Okay, I suppose I could knock any, first. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, would there be any? tasks involved in... No, it's just a simple uh, override security access, whatever your code. Right. Um, I'll come up with one officially later. Okay. Uh, the door opens, and Vrovreen, uh, you are immediately gr greeted with Vrovreen and a disruptor pistol pointed in your direction. Starfleet, you're not welcome in our quarters. And your tricorder indicates that the cloaked individual is moving in the rooms behind Vrovreen. Oh, I hate to be a bother. Uh, hate to be a bother there, but we might have an issue, and I believe that the ambassador is in a little bit of trouble. Uh, if you doubt it, have a look at my tricorder here. He will look at it. Uh, his normally grouchy face just. His eyes go wide uh, as he silently motions you in bus, b b ah, behind the closed door that will lead you into the rear section where the cloaked uh, th thing is. So, uh, to clarify, the cloaked thing is in this area? or uh, Yes, let me move. It is currently right back here. Okay. And the ambassador, that... well, you already see the ambassador on your tricorder, so yes. In that case, well, I think that there's one very easy way to handle this. He starts, uh, he pulls out his phaser and starts uh, tapping on uh, for fluff or for minor action. If this needs to be a combat thing, he's charging it up. Okay. Uh, with your permission, he looks to Wolverine. He nods. Ebeck right. will... Uh, Hennes will have her own phaser out and ready. Okay. Uh, Zahn is going to, uh, with the tricorder, just giving him a general sense of direction, mm -hmm. fire and use the charge for a... Uh, like, open the door, say, uh, Ambassador, uh, good to see you. I'm... Uh, just one moment. Fire's <laughs> a area spread. Okay. Uh, roll me challenge dice, please. All right. Da, 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 da. All right, that's the macro, and that's at the bottom there, mm -hmm. and that's two plus security, two plus security. discipline. So that, so that would be a total of six. six. Okay. So that, uh, including the one resistance given by the suit, uh, you now have an unconscious decloaked suit. Uh, crumples to the floor. Oh dear, look at that. How embarrassing. Um, the ambassador rushes over and uh, Vrovreen quickly intercepts her and keeps her back with his disruptor pistol pointed on the unconscious form. Uh, well, uh, everything's under control here. He's going to go over and try and sling under an arm. Um, we'll, we'll just be taking this out of your way here. Yes, I see that you do. If you need to register any complaints, um, well, Lieutenant Ebeck is right outside. They handle judicial affairs, and I'm sure that they will have something to do with whomever this individual is. Also, Commander Dolroom is an ops just waiting to hear about this situation. I should probably let him know, and I should probably get this person to a sick bay and or brig. A wise idea. Thank you very much for all of your assistance. Just doing my job, Ambassador. Gives another little two-finger salute and starts to drag this uh, man in this suit. Okay, so it appears that the individual, without you know a proper medical tricorder, it appears that the individual is just stunned. So where do you wish to take him or her? 
And keep in mind, I do hey. have a set for the brig. I think that I will drag them out and say, All right, uh, Lieutenant, if I might ask for a little bit of help, I'd rather there's a force field between the two of us. Um, or rather, between the three of us, but when they wake up. Hey, of course. And she will uh, help to drag the figure off. Okay. So you are all going into the brig, correct? Oh, yep. Right. Oh, you know, I'd say to cite this, but I'm not a big fan of scrambling my atoms. People tell me that's a bad enough problem. Okay, so... Yeah, there, there can be... There, I, it's safe enough these days, but there's still the occasional glitch. Also, just for the sake of fluff along the way, um, Lieutenant Rafa or Ensign Rafati will say, uh, will signal uh, Ensign Rafati to Commander Dolorum. This is Commander Dolorum. Well, I think you would like to come with me to the brig. Not to report at any rate. Take it you found our um, invisible friend. Oh yes, yes, we we met. Or I I'm on my way. I'll meet you there. Okay. So Commander Dalrum shall appear. So we're all we're going to wait for the whole gang to show up before the unmasking, just like Scooby Doo, huh? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we are bringing along the captain. Can a uh, barely conscious Jensen show up? <laughs> it's it's not like anyone can really stop you, can they? You just yell diplomatic immunity as long as you <laughs> yell. I as do you're it coming down the... immunity. <laughs> diplomatic down... immunity. I just see like Jensen coming down with two crutches, and if somebody says something, just go diplomatic immunity while throwing up a crutch, and then keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I believe everyone is here. And I don't have a token for the cloaked person, so we'll just pretend that he or she is there until the unmasking actually happens. So, all four of you stand outside the uh, force field as the, clo as the uh, no longer cloaked suit uh, begins to move and regain consciousness. I have the uh, the force field included dampening field in case somebody wants to try to transport themselves out. I figure that's pretty much standard within most brigs, but yep, that's fair enough. This is just going to poke a panel and just make a high-pitched wine blast in that chamber. <laughs> like, they're not getting up fast enough, and I'm going to pass out soon. <laughs> the Like an air horn? Yeah. The figure cups <laughs> uh, hands around the ears. At this point, it stands up and he pulls off his mask or the helmet. And it turns out to be this individual. And that would be the, for reference, uh, that is the Seneschal to the Romulan ambassador. Yeah. That's not who I was expecting. Commander Dolorum to. Both the Klingon and Romulan ambassador. Please meet me at the brig. Okay. They. Let's see. So Hanessa shows up. Given the fact that she already sort of knew what was going on, this is going to be an awfully tight set. I'm going to have to shrink people probably. And... Oh, ambassador, you're looking well. Funny seeing you here. Ambassadors, thank you for joining us. I figured you'd want to be here with the unmasking of the person who has been attempting to take your lives. This Patak, he's useless. Our intelligence indicated that he was nothing more than a doddering old seneschal. Yes, I... Levec, can I have an explanation for your actions? And at this point, um... Levesque's face has gone completely stone uh, placid. Very unreadable. So, Ambassador, I, I believe we have a member of the Tal Shiar here. <laughs> no, Captain. You have one of the last remi remaining members of Section 31 here. I don't see the point anymore. Jig is up. 
Why would you be part of Section 31? Section 31 hasn't been around for years. Yes. Cap Self-preservation, Captain. I am... You see, I, as any one of your doctors would probably know, after a thorough brain scan, as I'm sure you will perform one as soon as possible, I am no longer Levesque. I am... I am the... Ah. My... Your records would have me as... Ah. As to... Ah. To Shawl. Agent Tushal of Section 31, sent to infiltrate the Romulans roughly 40-ish mm, years ago. I see. When the... When the organization was... went public and extradition warrants were rampant, I felt it prudent to hide myself and continue the work as to destabilize the Romulan Empire as much as possible from and implanted my Katra inside this individual. I see. That still doesn't answer my question of why. As your as Ambassador Hanesa knows Levesque, this body is decaying of Scarl Syndrome, a neurogenic disease that has been, uh, a neurogenic disease that would have killed me within the next ten years of my life, most likely would have exposed me long before then. If I could have done any attempt to destabilize this Klingon and Romulans, get them fighting once more, I would have, it would have been a successful mission. But we decided we were going to interfere. Starfleet. It was worth a shot. Last I checked, you were also part of Starfleet, because even Section 31 is under Starfleet. Oh. Yes, yes. We, we are... I am very much aware... You are very much aware of Section 31's relationship with and out oh, inside and both inside and outside of Starfleet regulations the ends justified the means it seemed logical I don't see the logic in creating a war when we're here to create peace then you were not then you are as blind to the diplomatic situation in the Alpha Quadrant as I had feared Oh no, I'm fully aware of what's happening. But we sit out here where we can make a small little difference. And even the smallest stone can create a major ripple in the pond. And that we can agree upon, Commander. I was just hoping for... A, I was just plot, planning for a different effect with my small stone. You broke up there, McCall. Ah, sorry. I was planning for a different uh, result from my small stone. Well, I apologize to you that your plan didn't work, but I'm also relieved that your plan did not work. Just to let you know, you'll be staying in here, and we'll be contacting Starfleet uh, home base on San Francisco. And tell me exactly what we found. I'm sure that the judicial process will be quite interesting. A Vulcan mind inhabiting a Romulan body, who uh, up until who is currently claiming diplomatic immunity. Uh, if I may say, Commander speaks up Hernese. At this point, the Romulans choose will disavow Levesque of any diplomatic service and will begin a formal extradition uh, process to the Federation. Your services have been... Your services, Levesque, are no longer required. I suppose that is a logical conclusion. 
ambassadors, I apologize that this whole thing had to occur on our station when we were trying to broker a little bit of peace between all of our people. Ambassador Klassoff just snorts his Romulans. I told you it was Romulans. Stomps. Uh, Ambassador, it was technically a Vulcan. Pointy eared, all the same. Stomps twice and stalks down the corridor, limping I ever walk, so slightly. I walk over to like by Hinesse. I'm like, well, he's going to be a harder sell than what I want to admit. She shrugs. In time, I hope that he will soften. We shall see. Investor, I apologize for having to get as bold as I have to do, but while on the station, I have to protect my people. I understand, and the, I'm. I will file a full report, and I'm f with the recommendation that the Romulan Empire do not seek um, punitive, so, uh, punitive measures in this instance. I will vouch that you and your crew did everything possible to save the to save or preserve the life and the diplomatic truce here, as well as our allies in the Breen Confederacy for ultimately saving the Romulan consulate. Yes, Jensen's I also have gonna... to praise Jensen because he went above and beyond the things that he necessarily is required to do. And that will be noted in my report both to Starfleet and my letter to the Breen Confederacy. And on that, just around that time, uh, there's a signal coming down from Ops. Lieutenant Derval to Commander uh, Dalrum. This is Dalrum. Uh, sir, the USS Lunette has just entered the nebula and is making its way back. We have also Good, we have also oh, yeah. received an, another request from the Ferengi to leave the station. Tell the Ferengi they are free to leave and lower the quarantine. Yes, sir. I okay. reach out my hand. Hanese, I hope that our future interactions are much more pleasant than the last couple of days. As do I, Commander. And she takes her, uh, she takes your large meaty palm in her tiny or delicate uh, two hands and gives it a single shake and nods. If you do not mind, I wish to seek rest. This has been a trying day. I am right there with it, you. You please have a great night and hopefully I will see you soon. On better conditions. Oh, Indeed. Ambassador, if you would permit me, I'll escort you back to your quarters. Of course. I'm sure we have much to discuss on the way. And Jensen will uh, escort her back. And that is all the plot I have. Does anybody have scenes that they wish to do before I call it a session? Because I know it's well after 2 a.m. on the East Coast. Or, sorry, well yeah. after 1 a.m. on the East Coast, and people want to probably sleep. Well, yeah. Uh, there was one scene good. idea I had. There was one scene idea I had, but uh, we'd need... Uh, E ELH for that. Okay. So uh, uh, we'll I'll that just first. for right, yeah. For right now, we'll I'll just uh, do a final little stinger at the end as Hennis turns to uh, the other two Starfleet officers and says, "Well, that was a thing." Um, Galen would uh, want to meet uh, Barnett in a uh, cybernetic slash holographic lab. Okay. Uh, anyone care to respond to Lieutenant Ebak Stinger before we cut scene? I'll just turn to Ebak. It gets worse than this some days. Yes, yes. I I don't know about the rest of you, but I was off. My, uh, my shift ended three hours ago, so I'm going for a drink. I have to go give my report to the captain, and then I think I'm going to stop by sick bay to see how my husband is recovering. I think I might join you for that drink. Uh... Okay, so we wanted Barnett and Galen, was it? Yep. Okay. To minimize all the support characters, we'll put Galen and Barnett in this lab. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And feel free to start. Ah, Lieutenant. Uh, Lieutenant Galen? I have I do a for project you? I would like your assistance on. I think it'll be quite groundbreaking if we can get it to work. 
sets aside a pad that he was holding. Yeah, what would you have in mind? Do you know the name Dr. Ira Graves? Oh, Dr. Ira Graves. Um, if I recall, he was a fairly prominent cyberneticist. Um, huh. Vaguely, I, I admit that I'm not uh, I'm not completely up on that part of my studies. I have had shipped from the Daystrom Institute after the refit of the Enterprise D. It is the original computer course segment that his consciousness was downloaded to. Now, from what was reported by Commander Data at the time, all of his knowledge and his memories were recorded, but the emotions and the ideas and the essence of the human were lost. It was just data. But I have a theory that I wish to test. I want to take all of his information, upload it into a simulation, and let it run out its natural life. I want to recompile his essence from his memories and then put him into a holographic matrix. That's... That's a hell of a build you're talking about there, but oh, it might not be the, uh, I mean, I, I guess it's not the craziest idea I've heard. It'd, certainly it'd be an interesting chance to watch a pre-existing intelligence at work. I'd... Hmm. This would effectively give humanity a sense of immortality. Hmm. Farmer of it, at least. But I am curious to see if this can work. So long as we... and I, I don't know that I'd want to upload the original source data just because I, I feel like there would be the whole question as pertains to that, but... Got an interesting point. That's why I have the original core here. We can make copies of it and test them. And if we have viable successes, we can then attempt the main one. I would like to keep one consciousness running, not have multiples. It would seem unethical to have multiple individuals running around and then having to dismantle only to leave one. All right. So, uh... Well, I guess that sets aside the other holodeck ideas I had, but yeah, Doc, you're on. Excellent. And that's the scene. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Moving up the Discord. Where did my Discord thing go? There it is. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Sullivan Barnett, anything in particular you'd like to do? Um, well, I guess while I'm thinking about that later um, later on Sullivan it, or well Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett would drop by the holodeck because he's been he has been had one thing gnawing at him recently and this particular mission has reinforced it okay computer begin setting up new program uh, designate I'm Sierra beta 2 Please input program parameters. Takes a deep breath. Computer. Parameters for uh, set parameters for Borg cube based upon uh, or command interface areas or just activities of er, regions of significant drone activity. Uh, sorry, you broke up ha halfway through. Can you repeat that? Sure. Computer, uh, set parameters as uh, set parameters as a. Uh, oh, here's what I had in my notes. For uh, for Borg Cube specifically, operational area with heavy um, drone transit, computer interfaces, and possibly alcoving. Understandable. Working. Program completed. Please note that that drones will not be permissible in these unless you unless authorized by a security personnel. Understood. Program complete. You may enter when ready. And he's just going to step through and start 
looking around. All right. Anything in particular, or is that what we're looking at for the scene? That's just that's where I want to leave it for now. Fair I'll enough. I'm I'll be messaging you. Okay, uh, Captain Crawford, you are on the lunette, just coming back to the station. Uh, thankfully, it is still in one piece. Cool. Uh, anything you'd like to do? Uh, no, there's some things I have ideas for, but I am extremely tired, so... I can understand that. It has been a long day and a long mission. Yes, so it has. We shall call the game here. Um, thank you, everyone, for participating. I promise that this will be the longest game that I'm going to run. Uh, things from now on will be a little bit shorter and more concentrated. So, thank you all for staying with me for this marathon run. Uh, thank you for my players. Uh, just a reminder, um, anyone list still listening to the stream, we will not be here uh, two Fridays from now. I will be on vacation. Uh, so we will be resuming August the 9th. So thanks, everyone. I shall talk to you all later. Bye-bye. <laughs>